Ladies and gents, welcome to game one in a best of five semifinal. And this is a semifinal in the Open Classic uh, tournament sponsored by the Vipers community, a tournament sponsored by uh, Microsoft and Surfshark, and uh, all of you with your lovely views. And it is Tato versus Yo. Big, big day for these guys. Uh, Tato, especially, I think, has not made it deep into a big tournament semi in quite some time. Uh, of course, there were some some things that he benefited from, right? Maybe he would have been scared to face the Viper while the Yo took care of him. Maybe he would have been scared to face someone like Hera. Hera didn't end up making it into the tournament based on a sign-up issue. Either way, Tato's here, and Tato has looked really strong, getting past MBL and getting past others. He has already run forward to steal resources from Yo. Uh, however, I think Yo found his sheep. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. So Yo's in the blue. And uh, Yo's Chinese, and Chinese is a civilization that starts with zero food. However, they start with additional villagers. So if you're starting with additional villagers, you're going to want to make sure that those villagers are constantly working. If he runs out of food, it would be a problem for him. So he seems to have been fortunate to get that sheep back. The Tato has a civilization that is so well-rounded and is probably one of the few civs that can give Chinese problems. I still do think that Chinese are the superior civilization if they do not fall behind in Dark Age and Early Feudal. And you can see now what Tato's trying to do. Tato understands all the things that I've just said. He knows how important it is for him to harass Chinese early. And in a 1v1 battle, the Eagle will always win against the Scout in Dark Age because it has 4 attack and extra HP. But um, you know, for now, Yo is trying to pull this villager. I mean, this is idle time. If Tato wants to play this game, he can do it. Yo just has to accept that those sheep are getting going away. I think Yo's going to push in deer. I think he's going to end up being fine. These deer are really close to his TC. And I'm actually looking back at Tato's base. Yeah, he went forward without even finding his sheep. He was forward really early. But I'm sure he'll find this. I'm sure he'll find this. And he could push in deer as well if he'd want to. A map looks pretty good for Tato. Tato will have to wall up a bit more than Chinese. Chinese can play into stable and make those scouts, which is what you see about 60-70% of the time. A 23-24 pop scouts if he's had behind, fell behind in Dark Age, but I think everything looks good. All right. Um, Arcan, welcome to the stream. He says, yesterday I finished watching the nine-hour game and it was great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, glad you enjoyed that. This will be a nine-hour day, but we'll have plenty of games today. If you guys don't mind, it's pretty early, so I'm just going to sip my water and, and ease into the day. I think it's really bad to drink only coffee with a lot of creamer in it, of course, because I'm not a heathen. <laughs> and uh, then just, like, talk for five hours. So let me just... I, I make that mistake sometimes, and then my throat gets all raspy. It actually is pretty raspy this morning, but it's just because I haven't been awake too much yet, so... Prediction here from Juicy45 is Tato 3-2. Hmm. You know, I'm actually going to say Yo 3-2. I went with Yo 3-2 against Viper. Um, just because it felt like his form was good and his draft was slightly better. I think here I prefer his draft, but my I would say Tato 3-2 based on whoever wins Arabia here. Because I don't see Yo losing his home maps. I do not see him losing Lands Madness and Nomad with the way he he drafted um, and the way he plays those maps. So, think remember this, right? Uh, I end up looking like a genius or an idiot, but genuinely, I think whoever wins Arabia wins the whole series, but it goes the distance. And Tato comes over here, tries to stop the last deer from being pushed in. Not the biggest deal for Yo important to bring up you didn't hear me say it uh that yo has four on wood so he went four on wood opening as opposed to three and so he's actually going to try and achieve man at arm opening with chinese which is very rare and he has to go out and find tato right now he doesn't know what tato's up to i just love yo's dark age if tato would have come forward with an early drush it would be a little different right because he hasn't really walled much but tato's not doing that and he's going to scout what Tato's doing as well here, I think. He's going to come forward. He's looking for Tato's base. But if he sees the barracks, he's about to see a flag on the barracks. So he should know, okay, this guy's going for man-at-arm. If this is me, I would never find that barracks. 
I would never see the flag and I get surprised. And okay. Good to know life is fair. Because the fact that he hasn't scouted his opponent until nine minutes, he should be punished a little bit. And so he does not see it. I think you can assume it. If you haven't seen Militia just yet, but you never really know, and his scout is uh, a little weak, so he wants to make sure he's careful with that. Tata's economy looks really good. It's pretty common for Mayans to follow this up with an archer range. And here comes Yo, and here comes Tato. Now, Tato did see the barracks, but they're just passing. And Tato doesn't even... Okay, now he hits that Militia, and now Yo knows. And Yo has to decide on what he does here. So he can pressure Tato, or he can go home to defend. Yeah, this is a good play. I don't know why there's a wolf here in the middle of the map, but Tato's just passing it. And this is a good play from Yo. You never want to be chasing. You want to be dictating the pace of the game. And he's going to do that. But he also knows that he needs to defend himself from Tato. And Tato just checked the wood line. The wood line's walled. Berries are not walled. And Yo... What? That's so good. Though he did have a slight misstep that one villager is aside. But that's not a big deal. Yo saves those villagers. He can stay on berries. He took the deer. He's now going to make some archers. And he's going to protect the gold as well. So really good quick walling from him. He always leaves it to the last second, which always stresses me out. Like, Tato did it well ahead of time, which is what I would do. Like, look, you see how, how early he does it? I saw Yo do something like that yesterday as well, but I guess when you have confidence in your abilities, you just, you just don't stress out too much. <laughs> Whereas I'm sweating bullets. Another wood line's here for Yo, and Yo's going to protect that as well. Again, leaving it to the last second, but you never really know if Tato's going to stick at one spot. Or if he's going to reposition, and Tato reposition nicely. Uh, whereas here, Yo just decides to stick around, and Archer will show up for both of them. And there's a couple tricks you can do here. If you realize one of your units is getting attacked, you can try and send that unit to the north in this case. Like this. So if Yo looks away, his Archer chases that and runs right into your man-at-arms. I don't think we're going to see players on this level make that mistake, but there's a couple tricks... Uh, that you can try and do just to clear this up a little faster. And of course, the faster you clear it up, the better, because then you can send archers forward to the enemy. Big thing here is neither player can wall up. And they're kind of going into the same thing right now. I think it's crucial that the Chinese player continues to make archers. Because archers in Feudal Age are a really good option against any eagles. And that's what you're seeing a lot of nowadays. Aztecs going for eagles and pikes... Mayans going for eagles and pikes against Chinese. Despite some games you might have seen in this tournament or others, it is actually the correct play to continue to make archers against eagles in most cases, but you need to mix in knights as well. To put it simply, eagles, castle age eagles, are a really strong unit. I don't want to say broken, but they're pretty close to it. It's They're so cheap to mass. It's, it's so nice to be able to send all your villagers on gold because then you can make monks as well and... Anyway, you, you kind of need unit combos to deal with eagles because of their speed and everything. And here, Tato tosses away his man-at-arms. Now Yo can go forward, and, and Yo's just trying to keep his alive for now. And he's going to end up losing these at the exact same time. Now, Yo had 55 seconds of TC idle time, but that mainly stems back to most of Dark Age because you can't create vills right away with Chinese. But that amounts to about 30 seconds. So I, I, I guess an efficiency since then... It hasn't been as good as he would want. I see Tato's just scouting around with his eagle, and Tato's going to wall up the right side. He'll probably pull his army to the left side, where he's also walling. And uh, Yo, if he's not walled, which he's working on, but if you're not walled, you do have to worry about the enemy full walling and then sneaking an army. If Tato was walled right now, he would send his army, if you look at my cursor on the minimap, he'd go like this. And try and sneak into the back of the enemy base. He could try that now, but he also knows that Yo might be coming forward. So he needs to be careful with that. Yeah, George, I know there's no Aztecs here. I'm, I'm just making a comparison. I said Mayans and Aztecs, right? Like, while Mayans and Aztecs, their bonuses are a bit different with Eagles. And Aztecs are better at massing them in mid-game, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's lots of things I could break down about that. You don't want to go into skirmishers here if you're Chinese. Because it makes... Eagle switch so much more, so much stronger for Tato. On the flip side, you probably don't want to go heavy into skirms as Mayans because it makes the inevitable knight switch stronger for Chinese. 
And actually, that's a very common thing in general. If you're ever wondering why you don't see pros, as Yo just gets bid axe. Wow, I didn't realize that. Um, if you don't see pros going for trash units, it's because switching into units to counter those trash units is always so strong. Okay, so the reason Yo probably didn't have bid axe is because going man at arms with bid axe is really tough with Chinese with that uptime. That's why you don't see Chinese frequently go for that type of a build. And look at this. Yo is going into Skirm and Archer Mix. He's trying to flood the map with, with Fuel Age Military. And Tato's already clicked up to the next age. Tato adding a second range. Tato's going to fall back to save his military. Um, but he even used the market for that. Which is a little surprising, honestly. I don't feel like he needed to do this. But that's something that Tato's been known for for years. I can't tell you how many times Tato would use Saracens in a tournament back when Saracen markets weren't cheap. Okay, Tato, this is almost a big mistake. This still could be seen as a big mistake for him. Yo has so much more military right now, or he's the stronger force anyways. And Tato has to be creative here. Okay. But yeah, anyways, Tato was using the Saracen market for years. And no one else was really picking Saracens. And then the devs were like, hmm, we don't like that. And so they made Saracen markets cheaper. Oh, Tato's sneaking out. Tato's going for a sneak. And I think Yo is auto-scouting there. No way. Yo was auto-scouting. Yo didn't know. Look at this. I mean, maybe he knows. Maybe he spotted it. Maybe I'm wrong. I think I might be wrong, actually. Okay. Yeah, I'm incorrect on that. He's making skirms at home. I think he's going to be good. But um, it won't be good if it's against crossbows. And he cannot break into Tato's base. Yo needs to come home with this army right now. But to finish my thought, uh, the market was then buffed for Saracens. And now everyone seems to do that with Saracens. But Tato is like the OG Saracen market guy. He was doing it before it was cool. It's kind of like Viper with Khmer. Viper was going was playing Khmer before they were cool. I was making Khmer farms before they had that bonus, you know. Um, there's a lot of trendsetters in our game. And they all deserve a lot of credit. I just don't seem to get mine enough, sadly. Okay. Yo has shown over the last five or six years his ability to creatively defend. How does he defend from this? How does he survive from this? Normally, you'd be a little upset to have, a place, have to place a tower here. However, him placing a tower here when Tato has already sold some of his stone means that, yes, his TC will be delayed, but it's not like Tato can go three TCs anyways if he wants to. But Tato did the right thing. He saw that he forced a tower. He'll take that as a small victory. He's now going to try and break in on this side. And Yo is going to have to creatively defend again as he deleted the other market foundation, and he's going to go market, stonewall, stonewall. And he will not be able to complete the market, but it's going to be enough so he can get his upgrades and trap that army, which you can already see is moving this way. Yep, so his army's moving this way to trap this. That market there is at 400 HP. And the upgrades will come in for Yo. Now, Yo's stone positions. There's stone here. The other stone, not seeing it. It's out here. So he's not going to be able to really get that stone back. And Tato, if you've watched his play when it comes to archers, especially in team games, he's so good at sending on one force and distracting you and then bringing in the next one at the proper time. And look at this. Tato hits the gold. He kills two villagers. And Tato has ballistics, so he could kill more than that. Yo is really struggling now. And for Tato, he's already on the second TC. He bought the stone back to be able to get the third TC. And he's immediately adding a siege workshop at home. So it looks to me, as Tato loses this army, that he's comfortable with the damage he's done offensively. And he wants to just protect his economy lead now. Now, there's a big issue in terms of uh, efficiency, I think, because he doesn't have the farm count to support production of villagers out of three TCs. That is something that's going to hurt him. And you will see his TC idle time go up. Yo is going to add TCs as well, so it's not like he's going to be too far off. And he has the food for the vills. But the Siege Workshop is a perfect decision for Tato because he knows that he needs something more than just his crossbows. I like, I like the small things players do here. Like Tato with a few houses because he knows if the enemy shows up, this is a vulnerable area of the Palisades. But this isn't as big a deal because the TC's there. 
Anyways, he'll run away now. And he's actually buying food to keep the TCs working. Yo still has his freaking auto scout back here. <laughs> um, and Tato is going to try and make his way out to meet up with his main force. And the scout goes down. I think it'd be an incorrect move for Tato to move out without at least one Maganel. Um, you could make arguments for just sitting at home. But I think that's also... It's not really a mistake. But it's not going to give you a further lead if you just sit back now. But what you don't want to do is move out when the enemy has skirms. I guess Tato is, is comfortable with sneaking. That's what he's doing with this army. And Yo was is probably trying to find that. So he's going to send this army out. Now he sees it. But yeah, you really got to get your Maganels out here, Tato. He'll have three in a second. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. His units automatically attack the house. I think if he would have come in here close to the gold, he could have snagged another vill. But he does not see... Well, he does see the villager there, but he's distracted. Close game. But the Chinese player is not really pushing the Mayan player. This is where Mayans are preferred, I think. Because they're able to switch into that Eagles. They're able to get to Eagles comfortably later on. But Tato has two golds he's working with. He has his main gold and he has his secondary gold. So utilizing that is nice. But he's going to need this gold and he's going to need this stone. So this is a pressure point for Yo. Tato did nothing with those crossbows. He's looping to the corner. Yo there to track it. But Yo very much aware that he needs to push. It's still so weird to me that Tato has three Maganels and he's not even sending them out right now. Might be worried that there's a, a knight out there. Maybe he just doesn't feel the need to take any unnecessary risks. Tato's now adding a barracks. What? Okay, so I think he wants to go Eagles and Castle Age. Which is fine, don't get me wrong, but that'll take some time. What's up, Kenny G? Whoa, did you hear the wolves howling? We had simultaneous howls there. Woo, woo, woo. Yep, Eagle Warrior upgrade on the way, armor on the way, and wheelbarrow now for Tato. All right, so Maganel shots are going to change a lot here. If Yo's able to get good Maganel trades, he'll have solid crossbow numbers to be able to trade against Eagles until they're massed. Tato can't even comfortably take this gold if there's any range out here. So he really needs to clamp down on this. Yo, with the five population lead, he takes a hit. He'll probably pull his villager over to repair. There he is. Tato's still not losing these crossbows. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't lose them anyways against four skirmishers. But it's crazy to me that he still hasn't even been found. 80 villagers for 76, but it's about to get real crazy here. So Yo's saving his resources for Imp. Yo will think about Imperial Age, maybe defensive or even an offensive castle. Castle here would be really good long term. Because if Mayans don't have gold, Mayans really cannot do an awful lot. 18 to 13 KD. Now Yo has three Maganels because Tato has not been confident enough to try and get any hits outside of his walls. It's just so weird to me. But he does have this working for him. And he could get huge reward for this. And there's actually a world where Yo gets distracted by that. And sends all of his skirms and crossbows home. And leaves his Maganels exposed. And if he does that, Tato could pounce on them with eagles. Wow, great attention to detail there from Yo. This is as he gets hit at home. So he'll lose a vill. Let's see what he does with his mass. He's going to send his skirms home. You see a forward stable now for Yo as he sees eagles, but these eagles do have decent upgrades now. Okay, this is a big moment here. Okay, Tato could break into Yo's base. We know that Tato's going to clear up some of the Maganels. Tato with some really good shots to start it all off. He gets one. He's going to get two. He's going to get three Maganels. The crossbows are not in high enough number. There's not enough knights out here either. And these... these um. Crossbowmen were not able to break through. Yo's going to chase that down. Tata needs to get out of here. And in the end, I guess Tata will be really happy that he's going to be able to take this gold now. Um, selling his wood, a lot of wood, so he can click up to Imp. And Yo is going to click up to Imp here as well. Oh, Tato brought eagles this way. That was so good. The fact that he expected the skirms and brought them here already is huge. And now Tato could break in if he wanted to. I don't think it's quite enough to be able to do a ton of damage, but Tato's in the 
the ideal position. I was worried for Tato when he started to get the upgrades for the Eagles that he wouldn't be an imp. But the fact that he was able to figure that out and do everything else has been insane here. A little sloppy there with the Eagles. You don't want to toss them away like that. They're expensive units, but so his crossbow's alive. Over here, is, he's on stone. And he does still need to clear this, but he can take this gold comfortably. Pretty soon, you've got to think he's going to take this gold comfortably as well. All right, so 31 military versus 10. Tato has the eco lead. The only bad thing for Tato is he'll be later to imp, but that's by two seconds. <laughs> that's not a big deal. Yo can't take this gold comfortably. He is going to drop a castle here. But the problem now becomes, if Mayans have momentum, there's not an awful lot you can do if you're Chinese. If you try and go champion here, expecting eagles, there's crossbowmen out there, and here comes Yo to take out the siege. So... Tata will just make Arbalest then. If you try and go into uh, something that would counter Arbalest, like Skirm, the Eagles are out. So the Mayan player is in a position to kind of switch into anything that they want here. Not to mention that I think going Eagles is going to work against champions anyways, because champions are so slow. Chinese do not have supplies, so they don't have the discounted champions like other civs do. And Normally what you see is you see it. Cavalier, Light Cav, and Skirmisher, and Arbalest. Tato clicks Elite Eagle now. Tato in the driver's seat to start off this series. And looking at the draft, Yo has two home maps, and he has really good sieves, and I would expect him to win on those home maps. So, if you're expecting Yo to win, this is my logic anyways, on those home maps, Tato would need to have a good result on Arabia to be able to win the semifinal. Of course, I'm assuming an awful lot. Just seeing home maps and seeing civs doesn't do much. <laughs> um, th that's not how the game is played. And Elite Eagle kicks in way faster than Armor and Cavalier does for the Knights. I think Tatsu's going to win the game right here, guys. Yo's going to have to pull back. Yo needs to wait for numbers to be able to engage against these Eagles. He might not get those numbers. He'll lose villagers. Tatsu's going to drop a castle here. And Tatsu can then treb down Yo and Tatsu starts off the game or the day and the game and the series with a win. Really well played from Tato. The big thing I come back to is Yo, he wasn't able to pressure Tato. And that was actually because of Tato's extraordinary pressure in early Castle Age. Forcing the tower, bringing in an army here, and then hitting the gold. That's what decided it. Because then Tato was able to sit back and boom. I also think... The success rate for Chinese going man-at-arm opening in tournaments is very low because it's very difficult to afford your eco upgrades and man-at-arms with Chinese. And we saw that for Yo. He didn't have his wood upgrade, and I think that probably played a role in why he was also a bit later to Castle Age. Um, either way, there, it was a very good game. I think Yo needed to take that all-in castle. I think you need to go forward like you do, or like he did, add the stables and get knights out there. Try and keep Tato off those golds. Tato with more food, more wood, more gold collected. Way more of those resources. And Yo had the stone probably for defensive castles, but couldn't really place them. GG. All right. So score now is 1-0. And the next game is going to be uh, on one of Yo's home maps. So... Yo has Nomad and Lands Madness maps that are very different from each other. Let me just change the score here. And one sec. I've got to mute for about 10 seconds. Sorry, I didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to blow my nose into the mic. <laughs> um Okay, so Tatsu gets the first win. Nomad, uh the civs that come to mind for me are typically Malians, Persians, or Spanish. And I'll show you what civilizations they have available. The Tato, um, Tato has Malians available. I think that's his Nomad pick. Yo has Spanish. I think that's his Nomad pick. Lands Madness is a pure lands map where you tend to see a lot of scouts. Um, and so I don't really know what Tato's Civ is. He could actually go Aztecs. I've seen it before. Aztecs are good in a lot of situations. 
But we have to keep in mind there's other maps available uh, and there's other maps that you'll have to play. So Tata won and Yo lost. I think we're going to see something like Lance Madness next. It'll be Magyars against... Do you go Aztecs? You just did really well with Mayans. I think you could consider going Aztecs, and I think Tato did it in the past in this tournament on Land Madness. Yeah, Tato's question marks, though, come on these maps. I think Malians can compete with Spanish, but Yo is really good with Spanish and Nomad. So that's why I would give Yo the lead there, and... Lance Madness, Magyars is the number one Civ pick, if you ask me. Yeah, our base, the prop, that's the real problem. On Lance Madness, if you try and go Aztecs and you can't get gold, you're in trouble. And it takes a lot longer to make Eagle Scouts than it does to make regular Scouts. So there's a world where it works if you get to Spearman Eagle. But also, you could just fall behind really early and die. When Tato has Arena and Gold Rush as other maps long term, I think he might save Aztecs for those. I think, and, and the next one will be Nomad, so we won't get to answer our questions on what Tato does in Lands Madness yet. Um, I, I think it would be wise to save Aztecs for one of his home maps. And you would assume, if you pick a, if you pick a map, um, you're probably going to draft for it earlier than you would the other's maps. So I think those early picks are probably just going to be for Tato's home maps. Yeah, Preeminent, I'm thinking the same. I think Gold Rush Aztecs makes a whole lot of sense, especially since Yo's Gold Rush pick is probably Khmer and then uh, probably Tutans for Arena. But it will be Malian Spanish. I'll bet my life on it. And yep, Malian Spanish for the next game. We will be into game number two. Remember, I said based on the draft that Yo looked like he was in a sweet spot for his home maps. And let's see if he proves me right or wrong here. Um, Nomad is a crazy map. And there's a lot of factors, and I'll break it down for you here right now. All right. So, in the blue, we have Yo. And I actually should update the score here. And Yo is playing Spanish. Now, they build faster as a civilization bonus. So, if you place your town centers at the exact same time, the Spanish player is going to have their town center up about a vil faster. So, that's a good little lead for them. And so, in the north is Yo. He's going to want gold and stone available. He can see it. So, I think he's fine there. Same with Tato. A uh, present-day nomad, there's very... It's very rare for players not to be able to find the resources they want. So, while I do think... I personally not a fan of having nomad in a 1v1 tournament. I do think it's good, at least, that they made it a fair version where there's not... Like, RNG isn't influencing things too heavily. Here you have a dock for Yo, and there's going to be a dock for Tato. Now, the bonus with Malians is that you can get a... Because your wood uh, cost on buildings is discounted, you can afford to make a town center, a dock, and a fishing ship, and a house. That's crazy. So, meanwhile, for Yo, while Yo is a little faster to that first villager, what Yo has to do is he has to chop wood before he gets that fishing ship. So, Persians are similar, because Persians... They start with an additional 50 food and wood. So Persians with that can also afford to do what Malians do. And any early eco bonus on Nomad is so important. It's like, you know, like, it's like starting with an extra villager with Mayans or starting with an extra three villagers with Chinese on, on lands maps. Um, it makes a difference and it pays off for you. And also what's good about Malians is they're extremely flexible. They have good monks. They have good crossbows. Fast university upgrades. And then also out of their stable, they can make knights that are very strong, and they can also make camels. Spanish are kind of the opposite of flexible. <laughs> uh, their blacksmith upgrades don't cost gold, which is an underrated bonus. Used to be one of my favorites. Uh, but because they don't have an archer line, you're almost always expecting knights and or conquistadors from them. And on Nomad, since there's so much stone... And the potential for people to Feudal Age Rush is a little bit less than other maps. Typically, you just set, tend to see the Spanish player think about getting to stone and dropping a castle. Now, the, the thing about 1v1 Nomad is it oftentimes becomes a race for water. So, 
in order to fund the camels and to fund the conquistadors, you need to have fish. And so that can be exciting, and it also can lead to really awkward situations where one person makes it to castle alongside the other, but loses their fish and they can't afford to do anything. <laughs> so I think while you probably want to focus on land, if you're both players, you need to make sure you have the water focus. And that's my main concern for Yo. I know Tato is going to have that water focus. He's so good with fires and demos. And it's cheap for him to make the docks too with Malian. So I think Yo is either going to have to hide his fish and hope for the best there. Or he'll actually have to remain competitive on water. You cannot lose the six or seven or eight fishing ships you're going to have out later. And build a castle and still be okay with your situation. Now what players will do is they will scout with sheep. Or in this case, cows. <laughs> so we're seeing cow scouting. And cows actually have more vision than sheep. So Yo is just scouting around. And if you lose a cow, you know the enemy's there. Because um, there's no other way you would lose the cow. And it's really important thing on Nomad. You'll even see... Look at this. The cow... The scouting found the dock in the south. So scouting the shoreline is important. You can see Tato's doing that as well. Knowing where those dock positions are gives you an idea on what strategy you need to go for. Credit to uh, Silent for, <laughs> for saying scouting. Uh, I like to steal my viewers' jokes. Okay, loom now for Tato. Now, Tato's going to need a second building here. He has his dock already. He's going to need a lumber camp or a mill. So, yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to go up to feudal aids quite as fast as he wants. We should see a similar thing for Yo here. Sometimes you'll see people just skip the lumber camp. I think you want to make the lumber camp so you can get the wood upgrade, though. And, wow, Yo is walling. Okay, so I think this is a fast castle for Yo. And let me see if Tato's cow has found the dock. Man, they're so loud. <laughs> the cows do not like to be clicked. Nope, he doesn't see anything here. Uh, mods, could we just delete the bracket command, please? You're going to want Duke Canada. You're going to want to use the tournament command to get all that info. Uh, we'll just delete the bracket command. Thank you. I think it's some old bracket and people don't, uh, people don't realize <laughs> that it's on the TOC command. No, it's not that. Okay. Here, I'll help you out. You can Google the Open Classic if you don't want to use commands in chat, or you can just use the command that's in the title of the stream, TOC, and it'll take you, where you to what you want to see. Why is Tata over here? Does he know he lost the cow? Does he think there's a there's a vill over here from the dock? He would be correct in that. He could also be going over here to try and make a dock on this side. Okay, he sees the vill. He tried to wall her in, and Yo's like, nope, not today. And Yo's villager walks away, but here is the second dock now for Tato, which is actually pretty funny because Yo's trying to wall there. So Tato's approach is precisely what I had said, and he even scouted with the fishing ship, guys. So he now knows that Yo has all of his fish here, and we'll see how this pays off, but I think that Tato's going to easily win water, but have a very, very long feudal age. And then Yo's going to get to Castle Age, and Yo's going to get to Conks. I just don't know how many he'll be able to afford. Because if you lose your fish, it's not going to be an easy time for you. As Yo is bringing in a boar from the middle of the map. He does have Loom, by the way. Wait, does he? Yes, he does. Okay, that's a bug that we experience sometimes. I don't know why we're experiencing that bug with Capture Age, but um, I'll have to tell them about it. He's actually halfway to Feudal right now. It's just not showing that. But yeah, I mean, that food is going to be necessary if he loses all of his fishing ships. Presta. Currently has seven fishing ships, and you have to expect them all to go down. You could sometimes try and hide some in the corners for later in the game, but it's probably better to just get as much food as possible with them for now and expect them to go down because Tato's going to have the water. Now, what I think Tato should do is fish. If you still see the opponents in Dark Age... Your first three to six fire galleys are going to do a lot. So then fish behind it. Because you see his food count isn't that great. So add a fishing ship here. Add a fishing ship here. Um, also, stonewalling is good. You kind of expect... As he brings in another boar. What in the world? I mean, it makes sense. It's just crazy how many he's bringing in. 
Uh, but yeah, I think the big thing is is make sure you get stone walls down if the conquistadors arrive. There's the market. There's the blacksmith for Yo. Because he's got... He actually has enough food to be okay with losing the fish. Because there's 150 food per cow. And there's seven cows there on top of the boar meat. He is feasting right now. But Tato's got some cows as well. Okay, something I want to ask you guys, though. This cow version, this is different from others in TOC, correct? Because we saw a Nomad game yesterday, and there were not this many cows. In fact, I remember only sheep. So there must be different generations. Sometimes it's cows, and sometimes it's sheep. Similar to, like, standard DE versions. But that actually makes a difference. Because on Nomad, there's going to be a lot more food out there then, right? Unless there's somehow more sheep in the sheep version to, to balance that out, which I somehow doubt. So yeah, that's a big deal, and, and this is a big deal too. Tato, he's over here taking out the fishing ships. And you'll see with his fishing ships now, he's on 7. He's going to be at 8, 9 probably. But he's going to be up to Castle Age in no time as well. Yeah, also, scouting with cows is huge. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying it's too many. But it changes how you can play things. It changes strategies. And you cannot prepare for a cow version versus sheep version. Like, Tato might be seeing the cows right now and thinking, well, that's not good for me. <laughs> because I'm killing the guy's fish. He's still going to have food. Personally, though... I really, I'm a fan of the fact there's extra food other than fish because the reason I don't like 1v1 Nomad is because whoever wins water tends to have a really big lead. So this is cool for me. I like that. And you're going to see Yo drop his castle here shortly. It is a pretty good idea of where Tato's at. And I'm wondering maybe if he deletes the walls and drops it as part of his wall. Okay. Oh, he's getting water upgrades. Interesting. So he saved some fishing ships. Where are his docks at, though? Okay, he's got a dock here. Oh, this is going to be quite good, actually. He could take out four of Tato's fishing ships. Also has a dock over here. Wow, Yo is so good. Tato's not expecting this. Tato figured, okay, he's given up on water. He's going to go for conks. And then I think Yo might even castle drop him. Oh, jeez. Tato thought the house walling and stone walling would be enough. But if there's a castle here... It doesn't have to be close. Even a castle right here would eventually shoot down the walls. So in his initial dock, he's got fires. Here he's got fires. And he's he's chasing down Tato's fish. He, he's swinging some fishing ships back home. We'll see if they make it. And then he's dropping a castle, which Tato cannot see right now. Interesting game. I mean, still, Tato's brought in so much more food. But I think Yo is going to be fine for now. Let's see if Yo can land a demo here. That would be important. I think Tato's going to spread out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread out your fire ship so a demo doesn't hurt as much. Yo is going for an approach I see Tato use all the time. And instead of trying to fight their navy, you just try and take out their fish. It hasn't worked too well as Tato has been able to save these. But this is the main area where Tato has a fish and fishing right now. And Yo is looping around to that. I think Tato will be able to get the War Galley upgrade. So I think he'll be good. In defending his fish. It's just, will he be able to defend from conks? First thing Tato did in castle was research town watch for vision. He now knows the castle's there. And he now will know the siege workshop's coming up. So Tato's going to have to go full monk defense here. Which is a great play for Malians. They do get redemption, so you can convert enemy siege. Also, they get the gold mining upgrade free. So you're bringing in gold a lot faster, which is important. Here, yo, going for fishing ships. I think he got two. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. I think that was three in total. Maybe it was just two. I'm not sure. But overall, KD, eight to five. And Tato controlling water, though he doesn't have too much navy, as you see him get gill nets. And wow, this is cool. Okay, so Tato's going to go for a tower next to his town center. Tato is the master of guard tower defense. Has been for years. So he puts a lot of trust in those towers. He even won an entire tournament with towers four or five years ago. Thank you to Koreans and Aeros, early Aeros, Aeros slits for those memories. I actually would like to make a video where I highlight all the obnoxious things that have happened with 
with Age of Empires tournaments uh, and, and just civilization balances over the years because I think a lot of people miss that. They type a one in chat if you've never heard of the tournament Enter the Sahara, which was a 1v1 tournament back in 2016. Like, I imagine most of you don't remember that. Uh, it was basically using the early balance patch, which would allow the HD expansion civs on Vubly when nobody wanted to play them. Like, they, they were not played. The expansion civs were not played for a long time. So, yeah. Anyways, Arrow Slits was added, and towers were really strong. And in the grand final of the tournament, the final game between Tato and I think it was Melkor was literally just fast imp into keep. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it was just towers. <laughs> you couldn't make siege against them. It was just repairing towers and putting villagers inside. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. And Tato kind of started that trend. So I would like to make a video where it's like, hey, this happened. It was ridiculous. And it shows you guys, but also maybe links where you guys could watch those things. Hey, so the thing about, the thing about guard tower is it does help against the Maganel push. But I think Yo recognized what was happening here pretty early. And he also recognized how much you need to invest to get those upgrades. So he just made one Maganel and he's calling it a day here. He's still making conks, but he's not really focusing on much else except adding his town center. So I don't think that it's the biggest deal for Yo that Tatsu's gone for guard tower because he can just reposition and force more awkward decisions from Tato. Speaking of awkward, I think where Tato is on this map is awkward. He's kind of pushed back into this corner. And while he has the fish and he has the eco lead, I think he's going to need more map control than that. Yo's awkward situation is he's running out of cows. So he's going to need farm soon. And that's probably why he's getting horse color. He's also still on stone to maybe drop another castle. And I think a castle here would be good. Tato has this gold and this stone, and that's it. He doesn't have any other resources he can access that easily. And while the fishing is strong, it will eventually get worse for him. And Yo also is out here being stubborn with that fire ship, which I think he's lost all of his docks. I think it's just left over. So good work from him, but Tato reacts to that. And here we go. Uh, Yo is through with the conks. Okay, Guard Tower with Ballistic, soon to be Bodkin Arrow. And also there's Monks out there. Monks have 9 range and Conks have 6. Tatsu did a good job defending this. He knew that the Conks could even run around here, so he stonewalled. See? I don't think Yo needs to be hugely worried because that's that's big investment. If you see someone has all those upgrades, that's a University, Guard Tower, Ballistics, Blacksmith upgrades, just to keep your army out. So I think Tato has invested more into defending from the conks than Yo really did to make the conks. But Tato has a lot of fishing ships. He has 12 fishing ships. Yep, here come the conquistadors. Now they could actually get the fishing ships, so Tato needs to be careful about that. Yo sees them. I don't think he'll be able to get any. Boom! Nope. Okay. There's not many areas for, for Yo to really hit with these conks. And Tato, in a good position to get conversions and goes in for one, ends up bailing on it. And look, like, Yo doesn't care. He doesn't even seem to care. He takes out the deer. He takes out the monk. He does not seem to be bothered by the fact that Tato has done all this stuff. I think he's going to drop another castle soon. I think he should drop it here. Because if he can take Tato off of gold, he might not have scouting on all this. But he should have a pretty strong idea if he brings the Maganel over here that Tato is stuck. So I would say, if you know the gold's there, drop the castle there. But maybe if you want to take this towards Imp, what you end up doing is you just drop a castle more, more safely. If you're worried that someone will go Imperial Age and treb your castle down, you never want to place it forward. It's a little weird to me that he would collect all that stone and not have an immediate use for it. But I think we'll see the castle eventually. And I also do think we're going to see a faster Imperial Age for Tato. Because he has not been spending resources on conks that cost food and gold. See? Yeah, okay. So you know what Yo just did? Did you catch that? When that tower attacks something of yours, you see something around it, right? You see like a two or three tile radius around it. So he sees the villagers are on gold there. 
And right after his Kongs got attacked by the tower, he dropped his castle. So I don't know if that was a detail that he needed to justify dropping the castle. But he's now dropping the castle so he can pressure that gold and immediately research fletching so he would have the range. Now, Tato's counter to this is drop your own castle on this hill, go Imperial Age, and treb that down. So it's not like Tato's position is really all that bad because of this. Tato is, is owning because of the fish right now. This is crazy foodie co. In fact, I'd like to check. Tato has collected... Uh, it's not too bad. I looked at the wood and freaked out for a second. Uh, he's collected about 600 more food, but he also has spent a whole lot less food, but he's doing well with everything except for stone right now compared to yo. Um, someone said seed ram. I always, I don't think Malians get seed ram, right? I never go rams with Malians. It's always bombard cannons and cavalier and trips. I don't think they even get seed ram. I think they only get capped ram. But Tato's basically got to open up with trebs here and then make a transition into military. It's not like he's in a spot where he can do a lot of, of other things too. So I think we might see some monk upgrades as you see a monk go down. And Yo's just going to dive in. Oh, this is so good from Yo. This is so good. He knows Tato doesn't have a lot back here. Actually, wait a second. Is it good? I'm actually not too sure on that. He can kill this villager. But he can't do much else except delay the farms, I guess. Tato's making elite skirmishers because he wants an answer to the conks. I really don't love that because Mali and elite skirms are not the greatest. But it is he is in the correct line of thinking to worry about the conquistadors. You're never in an ideal situation when the enemy is making conquistadors. So I guess I should just remember that. Here, though, enough skirms. He already has ballistics. He already has bodkin should be enough, and he'll deal with that. He'll be an imp, and he's got incredible economy, and Yo is going to have forward castles that could both be trebbed down. Yep, conks go down. I think the conquistadors killed a few monks, maybe a few villagers, but Tato has just been taking control of the water, and this is what I mean about 1v1 Nomad. There's always going to be someone who wins water, and if the person wins wa who wins water takes advantage of it, they just control the rest of the game. It's absolutely insane what Tato's been able to do, even docking up here. And now he's an imp because of it, as I see barracks going down. So what Tato will want to do is get barracks out and with barracks go for champion. I guess expecting... I'm not sure why he's making barracks, actually. Is he going to go pikes? It's a little weird, right? Because... It's common for Spanish to follow this up with a Cavalier switch against the Skirm. So maybe he wants to go Pikeman, but Malians don't get Halberdier. So instead, you think maybe Camel, but he doesn't have gold right now. So that could be it. Pikeman and Skirm to open, push and get your gold. And then when you have gold, and I, I see a TC on the left side now. It's a little risky, but I think he'll be okay. You know, then maybe switch into the Camels. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm not sure when this got denied, but it seems somewhat recently. And Yo must have really good vision on the map then. Yeah, he's got an outpost over here. So all the TC was going up and denied that. Can't do anything to stop this TC. Can't do anything to stop Tatsu from taking this gold now. And Tatsu could easily treb this down. Yo needs to make sure he's prepping houses. He's very close to the pop cap. He needs to make sure he has houses. And he needs to make sure he's an imp, which he's on the way to now. Yeah, and he's just going to make a castle in the back of his base expecting to lose the forward one. But what else are you going to do here, yo? He's just 55 on food. He needs to be going Cavalier. I think going Cavalier, Halberdier is the way because the enemy's probably going to go Camel against you. And then if you have pointy boys, you'll be good. I think he could get temporarily housed. Uh, he's making some houses. He's making the castle. It'll be close. Yo, just now adding his stables, just now getting some upgrades. This is going to be good for Tato. Lots of momentum to work with. Could maybe drop a castle here to deny the stone from Yo. Making some Jibettos. Well, he made one. And yeah, he's just got Pikeman here to protect the traps. 
So Pikeman was a little awkward for me as Yo gets housed. Um, Pikeman was a little awkward to see, but it does make sense considering the situation for Tato. I think you're going to start to see stables come down now. Because having just Pikeman is not too good against the, the Cavalier switch. He's killing villagers. He's got a massive score lead. Now, granted, your score does boost much higher if you have water control. But this economy is so efficient for him because he won the water. And while Spanish and Conquistadors and everything is strong, Tatsu said, well, that's great. Congratulations on that. But I took the water, and there he gets a Conquistador. And now he's going to pressure all this eco for Yo. So Yo's eco was looking good. But he doesn't have army to deal with this. It's 50 army for Tato. It's two for Yo. What did I say about how good Spanish was? Well, it's not good if you don't have water. I guess Yo tried in this game. He tried to at least take Tato's fishing ships out. But Tato's just been adding them. Tato is 22 fishing ships. That's that's the meta on 1v1 Nomad. And I honestly don't even care about your sieve. If you, just, if you win water, you're going to have such a massive lead... And there's normally only one victor there. TC down for Yo. He has to abandon all these farms. TC down for Yo. Has to abandon the gold as well. He needs a big engagement. The only way Tato loses this now is if his units are not strong enough because his units are fairly weak. Yo's even going for light cap. He's not even going to go for gold units. So I think he'll save for Hussar and maybe try and go, oh, hand cannons. Well, honestly, Hussar's Skirmisher would be really good against what Tato's making. So even just straight trash would be okay. Um, you probably don't want to just do that, though, because then Tato could go champions. Isn't it insane, though, how Tato has so much red on the map? Look at that score. Look at the amount of fishing ships he has. He'll probably start adding fish traps now. He goes in with Pikeman here to take out the Treb, which won't work. But you can just toss away Pikeman and Skirmishers like it's nothing. You don't need to worry about that. So he'll go in for a raid. Gone are the times where Tato doesn't have gold. He's not really spending it too much right now, but it's good to get a bank up before a tech switch. And let's see if Yo can get a good engagement. He does have final armor on the light cab. He does have a few hand cannons. But we mentioned it when Tato had won water. We, we, we knew how important that would be. And then it was, will Yo be able to do damage with Kongs? And while Tato invested an awful lot into, into the defense of it, the Kongs didn't do anything. And, and the fact that Yo's eco was set back that far just to get to Conquistadors was never worth it for him. Pikeman after a Bombard Cannon. Skirmishers after a Bombard Cannon. Tato is, <laughs> as Yo's repairing that, which is hilarious. Tato just doesn't seem to care about these units. And it's actually hilarious. The Bombard Cannon is staying up. And the villagers are repairing the other way. Well, they were anyways. And I guess he ran out of gold. He couldn't repair it anymore. So that Bombard Cannon goes down. 175 pop for Tato still. 140 for Yo. Finally, Yo's military count's looking decent. He does have two relics back here. He does have a castle here standing. He does have a castle here standing. There's still gold to take. There's still there's still stone to take for him. Tato's food eco is pretty safe long term from Hussar raids. Uh, if he gets fish traps out. But also, he does have so many fishing ships here that are not on fish traps. So his food eco could be a little weaker than we think now. Tato uh, kind of slowed down that push. As here he comes, and he really wants to pressure that castle. Yo is... Okay, I guess he spotted some units back here. He's going to kill that off. And Tato now getting supplies! And he's going to go into champs. Which is a great play in this situation, because he sees a lot of skirms, and he sees a lot of light calf. If Yo can use this area to expand his farming eco, it's going to be crucial for his chances. There's not a lot of space here. So if he needs to do that... He also needs to keep this castle up. What he really needs is his own bomber cannon. And he has it. I actually didn't see it. And he's able to get that treb. And he's going to get the next treb as well. Hold the phone, people! It looked like Tato was going to dominate this one. Still feel like his position is strong, but he hasn't been making many gold units. Look at his resources. 
He bought himself so much time with the skirmishers. So much time with the pikemen. But at the end of the day, all the units he's fighting with are kind of weak compared to what other civs can offer. You do not get full blacksmith upgrades on the pikemen. You do not get halberdier. You do not get full upgrades on the skirmishers. Spanish get every single blacksmith upgrade. In fact, their tech tree, with the exception of the archer line, is actually insanely strong. And they don't have to spend gold in their blacksmith upgrades. And so Tato's at risk now of maybe losing his whole force. If you look at the value, that tells you everything you need to know. It's a lot more expensive to get to Yo's army. And with that, there's a whole lot more HP in Yo's army. Tato needs to click two-handed swordsman. He's only on long swordsman right now. He hasn't been able to get those upgrades because the barracks were built forward. Oh, no! I thought Yo was dead. I thought Tato had this. I... I mean, I don't know what to say right now beyond the fact that Tata's got to get buildings down. You see his upgrades coming in now. He's getting Farimba, which I, I'm not sure that was meant to be clicked here because Farimba gives you extra attack on your Cav, and he doesn't have any Cav. Maybe he meant to get Tigui. Uh, is the other unique tech? I don't know. I'd really like to see Yo get Hussar, but he's lacking the food eco as Tata's selling food right now. Funnily enough. And that fight's going to be okay for Yo as he drops a castle here. With these Bombard Cannons behind, Tato could lose all of his skirms. This is really bad for Tato. Tato's falling apart. This is not a fight he should be taking. Maybe he feels he needs to take it so he can protect the middle of this area, but... Oh, as Yo defends and takes out the Bombard Cannon here. Things are not looking good for the Spaniard anymore. 160 pop for Yo. 150 for Tato. And he's just too late with the tech switch. He was doing well, he had the time to tech switch, and he was just too late to it, guys. And Yo has somehow been able to hold on. Yo's farming eco will be at around 50 pretty soon. He'll drop another castle. He now has the military control. He's had the relic control. So there's some more out there to collect. How Yo was able to somehow hold this position and this position is beyond me. I think in some ways, based on... The very high standards we have for Tato. <laughs> I I think that Tato should have pushed one of those sides. Remember that moment where he was underneath the castle? Just ting, ting, tinging with his bikemen? Where was the siege, you know? But maybe he was overconfident. I mean, that's a real possibility. He had a 3,000 score lead. And so when that happens, you're thinking, well, I've got this. And I, I don't have to really... To be as, uh, in, in as much of a rush to get the tech switch in. Tato losing a lot of trebs. Uh, that does hurt. And Tato is about to complete champion. Malian champions have extra pierce armor. So they're quite good against skirmishers or any archer fire. But this is where I'd like to see Yo make cavalier. Or at least get the hussar upgrade first. I think even hussar is going to be fairly good against those champs. And with a few hand cannons behind... The Pierce Armor bonus does not apply to Hand Cannons. Hand Cannons still have a bonus against Infantry. Seems like every time Tato tries to get Barracks up, Yo just wants to castle it and deny it. Champions are holding their own here. At least for now. And Yo comes in here with a raiding attempt. Tato's doing the same. That's being tracked. Castle drop there on the Barracks and the Gold and the Stone. Which is really important, as we've been stating, as the Relic goes down. Let's see if Yo makes a monk out of his monastery. Yep, look, monk's already on the way. He wants to steal that relic. That's so crazy. I love that. So he's out to steal that relic. He's protecting this side. I'm not seeing an easy way for Tato to pressure. And also, look at these fishing ships. See how many of them are not on fish traps? I thought with the wood count that he would fish trap, and then he would, he would get barracks up and go champions a little earlier. But it's so hard to get that balance. It's so easy for me to pay attention to how much, how efficient the fish is. But I guess you could say of Tato's 57 food eco, the 27 fishing ships, most of them are not working all that well right now. I think you could go Cavalier, and you could win here, but there's always the risk that the enemy makes Camel. So maybe spending your gold on hand cannons, going Hussar, and maybe going just full trash combined with that, like Skirmishers and Halberdiers is the way to go from here if you're Yo. He does have more land control. If we combine the water, Tato's got more control, but a lot of that doesn't matter anymore. And Yo seems to 
be very content with just walking forward and dropping castles. These Spanish villagers build so quickly. Yo has full blacksmith upgrades. Is every blacksmith upgrade you would ask, you would want? And Tato is trying to go for his own light cav. He doesn't have the final armor yet. The castle will go up. A castle that has ballistics. A castle that has bracer. A castle that Tato doesn't really have the siege to contest. There's one treb. I don't think that's enough. What a turnaround. If Tato loses this series, I think he's going to look back at this game as the game where everything went wrong. I don't see Tato not winning another game. I think Tato's going to be able to win another game, so you don't have to freak out too much if you're Tato or if you're a Tato fan. But he had such a lead in this game. I thought for sure he was going to close it out. I think full credit to Mr. Yo for holding on. But also, you've got to think about the possibilities for Tato that he just didn't capitalize on. He had a 50 population lead at one point. And he was an Imperial Age significantly faster. And somehow, Yo wins that game. You know how, um, like, I don't know what sports you guys watch or if you guys watch sports at all. And I probably shouldn't be making sports comparisons too much in video game casting, but... You know when teams are really close and there's always that that one game where a team grinds it out, one of those games that goes into overtime, one of those games that shouldn't have been winnable and it's won? Very frequently, those are the games that decide a series. And even though it's 1-1, I just want you to remember that. <laughs> uh, because that's what comes to my mind here. Yo, giving himself a chance by tying it up here. I don't think he could have ever come back if Tata went up 2-0. And uh, Tato, he's going to have to try and forget that one very, very quickly. What a comeback that was. Look at this. So, at this point, this is what I mean. Tato should be closing this game out. He's got more than double the military. And he has trebuchets. Yo didn't have anything to stop four trebuchets with Pikeman and Skirmisher for the first 10 or 15 minutes. And I think what Tato thought was, well, I'm fine. I don't really need to to try and like overextend with trebs. He kind of trickle trebbed it. He made one or two instead of committing. And then when he was thinking of the champion tech switch, he didn't have the proper timing on it because Yo just came out of nowhere with units. He spiked up. Yo had to relocate so much of his eco. Whoops. Um, here return to map. Yeah, like Yo lost two forward town centers, all of his farming. He had to relocate his eco to different areas, and he somehow pulled that off. Now, I always find Malians to be problematic with tech switching. And I actually have a YouTube video where Tato played Malians against Doubt, had the lead, and he failed in the tech switch when he went to go in the champion. So that seems to be a theme there. I don't know how many of you guys watched that. It was like Malian flexibility versus Mayan strength. Um, that's a theme for Tato, but he gets leads with them. He just is unable to close it out. Maybe it's a case of a Civ having too many options. You don't know if you want to go Cavalier or if you want to go for Camel or if you want to go for Champion. Maybe it's a case of maybe in that game it was the score. He probably thought he was further ahead than he was. Yeah, that was that was extraordinary. <laughs> There's no other words for that. Uh, let me get to some of these names here uh, who are probably lurking right now. Maybe some of them are in, are in chat, but thank you, Barrigo, very much for 32. He says, love me some T90. Appreciate you. Uh, Juicy J, thank you. Sam Lad. Uh, Jorian. Sacred Oracle. Breakfast Taco. Oof. I didn't have a real breakfast this morning because I had to cast. So I I wish I could eat you. <laughs> in a in a food way. Yeah, anyways. Uh, Morty and Ulta and Tears for Beers and Lionheart. Thank you, guys. Uh, Don John and Nancy Crow and Laser Ed and Lara. You're all wonderful. Just forget what I just said on stream. Thank you. Uh, what's up, Project Belgium? Nice to see you again. Project Belgium showing up for all the casts. Belgium, I don't know if you saw the draft or heard about the home maps, but I would be interested in your quick Twitch chat expert advice and insight. Okay? Um, so the next game is going to be on one of Tato's home maps. Tato has Arena and Gold Rush. And this is what the draft looks like. I'm curious on your thoughts on the rest of the series and who you favor based on the civs. 
It is worth mentioning that the other remaining home map would be Yo's, and that's Land Madness. So Yo wins with Spanish, Tata loses with Malians. We have either Gold Rush or uh, Arena. Did I just... I said these words, and I can't remember. Yeah. I don't know which Tata will go for next. But Tutans are really good on Arena. I think that if we see Gold Rush, Yo will go for something like Khmer. Mm. Anyways, the way I see it is Tato has the best arena civilization or one of the best in Teutons. And you could also argue the same for Aztecs. Malay are tricky though. Yo would probably go for Malay there. And Malay always have a chance. I think this series might be decided on who wins that gold rush game, which can be really tricky. Yeah, Burgundians are also really good on Arena. I think for Yo, we know Malay is going to be on Arena. Um, we know Madgars is going to be a Lands Madness. Like, I don't think Incas are going to be seen at all, actually. And I think Khmer is going to be Gold Rush. Okay, people are saying they prefer Tato civilizations. For every single one except Lands Madness, yes, possibly. Yeah. Um... I think for Gold Rush, he would probably have the superior save if he goes for Aztecs there. I uh, don't know. I don't think Vikings would actually be utilized in the remaining games, which is weird that he picked it here, but maybe he just wanted to, to kind of take that away from Yo, being scared of it or something. That's what I'm thinking, Project Belgium, is that if you go Khmer on Gold Rush, you might have some struggles on Gold Rush, which Tato could choose to go for next. I would always go, and it is Gold Rush, I would always go for the map that I had available that would give me the best chances to win the next game. And considering the sieves, the answer is Gold Rush, and that's exactly what Tata will do. Hmm. Blue coffee, man. But what if you... Okay, so if you know Tata's going to go Aztecs and you think Kimura are worse... Do you try Incas? I know Yo has a lot of belief in his Incas. But I don't know if you can really try. The problem with Incas ever since... Okay, I'm, I'm having this conversation again. But the problem with Incas is they are a worse Mayans or a worse Aztecs. Okay? They are just... They're just slightly worse. I'm not saying Incas are are not a good sieve. And in many ways, Incas are more flexible. But they don't have an identity right now. So competitively, ever since they removed the Feudal Age uh, villager armor and attack, the sieve is just a worse Incas and Aztecs. So if you try and pick them as a counter pick, it does not work well. So an identity was removed from the sieve. <laughs> And replaced with nothing. So I kind of, I love Incas. I actually love Incas more than Mayans and Aztecs. So please don't consider me being an Inca hater. I just want the Civ to have an identity. I want it to have something. That's all. Um, but they do have a lot of counters. They have the Slinger, which is a very strong unit. So, I mean, maybe you're thinking, expecting Eagles go Slinger. But I think Monk, Eagle, Siege from Aztecs just kills everything that Incas can do. Kamayuk are elite Halberdiers. It's worth identity. Yeah, okay. So, Halberdier Henry. I love the Kamayuk, but I also love the Teutonic Knight. I also love the Cataphract. In competitive 1v1s, unique units rarely play a role. <laughs> Um, and that's that's part of the issue, right? Because it takes uh, a lot of time to tech switch. So we'll see. We're talking an awful lot about it. Let's see what Yo ends up doing. What the? What the? Okay, it's Gold Rush, and Tato's gone Tutans, and Yo has gone for Incas. What the crap, man? We we were all wrong. I thought that we would see Aztecs here, but Tato maybe wanted to surprise us all. What in the world? Okay, so now, suddenly, this is a completely different conversation. All right, so I just had to catch up to live time. We're about 60 seconds behind. We're in now. Yo is in the blue. He had a tremendous comeback in the previous game. That was amazing. And 
Tata's got to be kicking himself, but still. Uh, Yo is gone for his famous Inca pick. Uh, we just discussed before this game that he used to pick Incas largely because of the tower and villager bonus, and the villager bonus was removed in Feudal. So now we're going to see more of what the Inca tech tree can offer in standard play. But not a save I really would have expected to see here on Gold Rush. Um, there have been a lot of Gold Rush games over the last year or two in tournaments. Uh, and, oh, as Yo takes some real damage to that town center. He was trying to lame. That's not going to work now. That's a big deal. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of Khmer and Yo had that drafted. So maybe Tata was expecting Khmer and thought Tutans would do well against that. Who knows? Now, I think Tutans are very underrated civilization right now. The only real concern for Tutans is if they're up against Cav Archer civilizations. Incas can struggle big time in this matchup. Tutan Knights get extra melee armor, which helps a lot against Pikemen and Eagle. And also, Tutans resist conversion, which helps a lot against the Monks. This is like... This is some big brain play from Tato. I don't know if he was expecting the surprise Inca pick, but I think that Tutans are better against Incas than any other civilization he had in the draft. And I think that Tutans are better against Incas than they would be against Khmer if Yo would have gone with that expected pick. So basically, what you're going to have to go for here, I think, is archers if you're Yo. But Knight Maganel is extremely strong against that. So I, I don't know what combination you can really go for if you're Yo. You're going to obviously have to gain a lead in some way and hold it. And maybe that stems back to whatever happens with the middle. Um, I like what they did with this version of Gold Rush. It's similar to... Actually, honestly, Krasini made the maps. So I'd have to ask him. I don't think Krasini's here listening to me right now. But it wouldn't surprise me if they... If this is basically the Hidden Cup version. <laughs> um, we spread out the gold in the middle for that. And we wanted areas where players could TC the golds. It looks the exact same. Uh, I think the only difference is I asked that there would be only wolves instead of lions. So what it means is you can act, you can both have access to the gold at the same time instead of the standard DE gold rush where that's not the case. Wait, actually, didn't they make a change to standard DE gold rush as well recently where they spread out the gold in the middle? I think they did, which is a really good change if they did. But I recall seeing uh, a gold rush game. I, I uh, have not played one, and I think I noticed that. Hey, sir. So yeah, it's a good change. It makes the map what it's about. It still gives that focus on the middle, but it, it also doesn't make it quite as snowbally. Yeah, wood lines are always the tricky thing here because Tato is able to wall off quite nicely because of his wood lines. Uh, for Yo, it looks like he has to wall a little bit more. Actually, a whole lot more to get full walled. But it's not the end of the world because both players are going to have golds. But this gold is so unfair compared to Tato's golds, right? Just based on the woodline positioning. So, Gold Rush is always a tricky one. Anyways, I expect Fast Castle from here. Fast Castle into probably Knights for Tato. And probably Archers for Yo. T90, do you think there could be a compromise Inca Blacksmith buff where only offensive or defensive upgrades work on Villagers in Feudal Age? Well, the big thing is the defense. Xander. The big thing is the defense. Defense is what made it strong, not necessarily the offense. And I think the problem is... So you have to start with why the change was made, right? Why was the change made? Was it because Incas were dominating with that in tournaments? Because the villager rush was, was impossible to stop at a high level in tournaments? No. Statistically, that's not true. It, they have won and they have lost, okay? Is it because of... A very obvious reason, people complained. People were like, oh my god, I don't like it! I don't like it! Probably yes, okay? Probably yes. So, if that's the reason, if, if people didn't like playing against it is a reason, I would like to provide the devs a list of other things people don't like playing against. You see my problem? They made a choice which made a Civ worse competitively, didn't replace it with a proper identity, and they, this, the reasoning for it is not used in other instances. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, that's... 
that's my issue. I just want a consistency. But um, anyways, back to your point. I think if you make those villagers have attack only in feudal, the the attack is not what made it strong. So we're not going to see a big change in how Incas are played. And if you give them armor, it's going to be right back where it was. By the way, I'm not saying that it wasn't strong and needed a buff, uh, a nerf in some way. Um, I'm just saying I wanted it replaced with something. So I think if they want to go a different direction with Incas, they need to change their team bonus. Because their team bonus currently is like farms build faster. I think they could tweak the team bonus and give their eco a boost. And if they give their eco a boost, we'll actually get to see all the Inca options. And um, and yeah, we'll we'll go from there. But... Yeah, again, I, I unfortunately it, with this this game being slow, it's given me time to to rant a little bit. You guys might want me to break down things I've already kind of discussed here, but I just want consistency. And if there's a reason for one change, I want it to apply to other changes. That's all. It's not an easy job being a dev. Sometimes it's a thankless job, but uh, it's it's gotten a whole lot better over the years. Market blacksmith for Tato. What? This tells me he'll open up with no military, which is very uncommon. Typically what you do, as you see Yo going for a barracks, and an archer range, then a blacksmith, typically what you do is a barracks, a blacksmith, and a stable. Is his map so good that he can boom? Is that his plan? I, okay, Tune Economy is insanely strong, and I think it would be... I mean, he would dominate if he can somehow get away with it. But at the same time, you're up against Yo, the master of pressure and map control. Do you really want to just sit back and say, hey, Yo, try and kill me? I think that could be seen as a mistake for Tato. Now, if you're going to play this boom approach, it's probably into defensive siege. And if it's into defensive siege, that's the right call. Even before seeing it, it's the right call. I think you only assume archers anyways. Um, I'd like to see Tato maybe get a TC up in a position that protects a wood line, but also protects a gold or stone. So I think he's going to TC here because it protects his wood and his gold. And then if he goes for three, which again is super greedy and very, very rare for gold rush, maybe another one here works. Uh, and if he wants access to stone, he could go over here, but I don't love that position too much because it doesn't protect this area. The reason he didn't make his market blacksmith against the walls is because this would be a surprise to Yo. Yo would... Yo is assuming something is going to come forward from Tato in terms of military. He's probably expecting knights. So the reasoning for building it behind is basically to hide that. If you see this, just like a caster would assume, wow, this is going to be different. Yo would do the same. Wow, dude. Tato's TC positions are so good, though. <laughs> wow, these are... These are some good TC positions. Well thought out. Not easy to do in the moment, right? He has a house wall here. So it's very difficult for crossbows to come in this way. If he completes this TC, it's hard for his woodline to be ranged. Though I'd say this area could maybe slightly be ranged. He'll have to move him over here. This town center protects this area. There's no way Yo chops the tree or anything to get through here. So, Yo has invested a whole lot more than Tato. He's invested into two additional buildings, and he's making the archers. And so, naturally, he can only afford one town center, but... It's worth remembering, Tato is giving up map control for this. He's, he's not going to have the gold in the middle. So, he needs to eventually do that. So, I think what the play is, Tato will 3TC boom into a crazy night rush. Um, when he gets to about 50 or so vills... Actually, usually... Is 55 to 65. With Tutans, maybe a little earlier because your farms are cheap. You then make the barracks, then make the stable, and then you push out with knights. He even got heavy plow. Wow. So he got the wood and the farm upgrade with three town centers. Man, Tutan economy is insane. We thought that Tato would play Tutans on arena, but he just turned Gold Rush into arena, and here we are. As a scout, not a whole lot else, and Yo sees this, and Yo says, well... I know what to do when I see Palisade walls and my enemy does nothing. I'm going to break through. This is amazing. <laughs> Woohoo! He's probably feeling so good about his situation. Like, what is Tato doing? 
Why is he not making military? Then he probably clicks the scout and sees that the scout doesn't have upgrades. And he's like, what? If the knights had upgrades, the scout would have upgrades. I haven't seen any knights yet. What is this? Forward Vilfrio. He's going to try and get a siege workshop up. And Tato, I think, is scouting for that possibility. Okay, yo, did see the TC, so he's, he's now coming over here, but that could be seen as wasted time. The big thing here, though, is Tato cannot take stone, so he cannot defend himself with a castle, and he cannot rush out to the middle to secure it. And so, as that farm is getting... Somehow the farm got hit, but the villager didn't? That's weird. Anyways, as, that, as this pressure is here, Tato's going to eventually need to clear it, and he's going to add a Maganel, which I think would be... A good move just to pull behind his walls here. Now, any other civilization would be prone to getting monk rushed as well. But since Teutons resist conversion, you can't really go for that against Teutons. Sometimes you do anyways, just for healing purposes, but it's pretty rare. This is a good game here, guys. Great strategy from Tato, but it's also extremely risky. I'm curious when he makes the barracks and okay, here we go. What did I say? Like 55 vils? Barracks stable. He'll be at that 55 65 range. That's when you have the farming and gold eco to really feel comfortable. And to be clear, it's not that the players look for that. Like I, I never look for that. It's not, oh, I'm at 55. It's time to do this. So don't stress yourself out if you're trying to learn the game. It's more of a feel thing. So you just you understand your economy based on feel and you say, oh. I can make stuff now. Let's do it. And Tato, with a really poor move to lose that Maganel, his Siege Workshop is over here. So it takes a while for that thing to roll over to reinforce. And guys, you cannot repair a town center if you do not have one stone in the bank. You do not use stone or spend stone to repair a TC, but you need to have one stone in the bank to repair town centers with wood. Now, what's crazy is... It, I actually think it's perfect balance-wise. It might seem stupid, but I actually think it's good balance-wise because what it does is it nerfs what Tato's doing. <laughs> it nerfs straight 3TC booming because you then have to buy stone just to repair. So that's what he's done. Now he's adding the stables. So even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense on paper, I actually think it's a really good thing that they keep that in the game because we... Age of Empires is already a boom fest, and we should promote a little bit more pressure, so. Yeah, so, I mean, he could have collected one stone ahead of time to think about this. But, I mean, he is the market. He just bought it, and it's fine. But, yeah, the, the thing about this is, as this eagle is underneath the TC, you're going to have to take map control here, Tato. So, you only can work with this gold for so long. He needs map control. He needs the middle. And Yo's even going to run out here to TC the middle. He's on three TCs. He'll be on four then. But will Yo be able to hold against the amount of Siege and Knights that Tato's going to send out? I absolutely love the fact that Yo has outposts out here. It's a really good idea of if Siege is going to come out. I love the fact that he has good crossbow numbers because his game sense will probably tell him it's not just going to be Siege for Tato. Overall, this is a perfect game of Age of Empires, honestly. In terms of strategy and, and adapting to strategy, it's a perfect game of Age so far. As Tato is over here uh, trying to get maybe a TC on the gold. Ooh. Now, this is interesting because he's going to need wood to repair his TC, maybe. Sometimes if I try and add a TC when I'm repairing one, I run out of wood to repair. But I'm freaking out for nothing. It doesn't look like Yo really wants to pressure the TC. Oh. Yeah, and maybe that's why. Maybe he feels like he needs to pay attention elsewhere. And if he starts to attack the TC, Tato with the defender's advantage is just going to get some quick snipes there. Okay, armor for Tato. He's taking his good old time here. 80 villagers. This town center is going to go up. If only Yo knew about that. It's hard to say that that's a mistake for Yo. Because even if he had one crossbow scouting there, Tato would just clear it with a knight and finish the TC. That's just a really good play for Tato. Has a lot of crossbowmen. And I, as I think Yo is just scratching his head like, what more can I do against this? 
It was the perfect strategy for Tato. And I, I don't think Tato ever went into this thinking this is how you play it. He just saw the map and adapted to it nicely. And he's going to go all in for map control. Tato's playing this so good. Adding a fourth stable, now going to stone so he can castle the middle. Every little thing that you would want to do in Tato's position, he's doing. Except for taking out that Maganel. Well, the crossbow was more important, so he's going to take that out. I think a siege workshop in the middle would make a lot of sense here. Uh, that would also block any castle foundations. Uh, this is not the numbers that Tato will need to engage, but now Yo is going to see he's got chain barding armor, so this is going to be tough. Because if you try and go pikemen, Teutons have extra melee armor against that. If you try and go monks, Teutons have conversion resistance. Toons is quite possibly the most OP Civ that people do not consider OP more often than not. And it purely comes down to their weakness against Cav Archers and their weakness on more open maps. But if you play them this way, this is just perfect. Not to mention that Incas don't have any real bonuses, which we talked about before. Like they, they, they have options, but they're not Mayans, they're not Aztecs, they're just not able to compete at the highest level, quite like Tootens are. Yeah, there, it's just like, sometimes you say, oh, God, Tootens suck. And then other times you're like, oh, Tootens are amazing. <laughs> it's it's pretty awkward. It's a tough one to balance. But it does give them an identity, right? Which I think is really important. You don't want civs to be good in all situations. You want them to be weak in some and strong in others. I'm really happy, man. As a, as a Tooten fan for 25 years, I'm very happy to see Tootens in this spot. Mistake here from Tato, though. I think he's forgotten about this. He probably heard the attack signal from the other knights and didn't realize. That was a mistake for him, as you see Tato on the way to Imp. And here it doesn't really look like it's possible for Tato to get through, as Yo is going to try and castle the middle. Now, Tato is probably going to send all of his knights back for that Maganel. And if he does that, he won't have the knights in the middle. The crossbows are heading towards those knights now. Yo will be fine with losing that Maganel now. And Yo clicks up to Imp as well. So Yo castles the mid. He can also clear out some knights here. Because Tato's knights are really slow. Oh, even the castle, if it completes, is going to be able to take out those knights. And now, Tato's got all this siege. But what is he going to do with it? I think he's got to pressure this. Yo, uh, his siege workshop being forward and going down now is going to be a real problem. Actually, Yo could pretty soon not have a TC on gold. Okay, sneaky Maganel from Yo. No way. No way. Okay, well, at least he gets one. Can you imagine if he got both there? Tato focusing on a lot of different things right now. And he's probably going to castle as well. The castle's probably going to come up over here. Yep, that's good. You want to make sure your treb is right underneath your castle. Good decision from Yo to add the Siege Workshop. You need your own Maganels. You cannot lose this TC. You can, but it's going to make matters a whole lot worse for you, and I would say you're behind, so... Tato sees it and says, that's cute. <laughs> All right, maybe the Siege Workshop should have been on the other side. Oh, no. Guys, here's the problem. Cavalier and Armor takes about twice as long to research as all the Archer upgrades. But Tato is in the Imperial Age a full minute ahead of time. That's problem number one. Problem number two, and there's more, but I'm going to stop at two, is that Arbales cannot take out trebuchets. Cavalier, they can dive and take trebuchets. So if this becomes a matter of treb warring underneath castles, only one player can take out the trebs, and only one player is going to win that treb war. Tato went from zero military, and I remember a Tato fan in chat was like, why is Tato doing nothing? <laughs> he was booming, man. Tato went from zero military to 36 military. And while there are other things to discuss, possibly, this is just exceptional play from him. He read the map well. Remember, he surprised us with the Teuton pick. We thought he'd go for Teutons on Arena. And for now, I'd just say the only thing, he's he should be a little bit careful about taking engagements. He wants to take out the ranges, but... It's going to be all about the trebs. It's going to be all about the middle. The lack of speed on these things is a problem, isn't it? 
to run into an engagement, it takes a lot longer, and to run away from an engagement, it takes a lot longer. So you've really got to make sure you're going to win the fight. And Paladin's on the way. Well, that helps. Good. Yeah, this, the weird thing about Tootins is you don't even get that scared if enemy tries to go Arb and Halb against you. Because they commit all their upgrades to Arbalest, and then when they're tech switching into Halb, even if they have the Halb upgrade, you normally hit them with Paladin before they have all their, their ups and their numbers. And you have all that melee armor. I still maintain, by the way, that Tootins... I'm okay with Tootins getting plus one melee armor in Castle. I don't think they should get additional melee armor in Imp. The Civ's already nuts as it is with that. Um, but either way, for now, they, they get all that extra melee armor. So, not going to be easy. As Tato's trying to catch out Yo's reinforcements, he's doing that. But he also might not complete this castle. But Yo's going to lose his. And Tato was real patient there with his trebuchets. I don't think Yo knew that castle was there. Paladin's about 50 seconds away. So, as I stated in Dark Age, I just don't see what more Yo could have done. If you play Tootins perfectly and Gold Rush perfectly against Incas, I think you kind of get to this position. <laughs> it's it's crazy how saying something in Dark Age could lead to this, you know, and, and have that actually be the case. And I could be wrong on that. But with Paladin in now, Tato is not going to shy away from any engagements. And while they're slow, they're going to come to the hill here, these Paladins. And this is game over. Look at the HP difference. I'm even including 13 villagers in there. Paladin is Paladin. Tootins are Tootins. We now have supplies. I don't know why Tato feels the need to click supplies. I don't think he's going to need champions in this game. Would be nice if all of his Paladins attacked, but... Uh, doesn't matter. Supplies maybe for the memes. Tato wins. And Tato dominates with an excellent, excellent strategy. You know a strat is good when I cannot even think of something that could have been done against it. Can you guys think of something that could have been done there? Is there anything more Yo could have done? I'm... I would like your ideas. If you say no, that's fine and we can move on. If you say yes, I'd like to explain why you're wrong. <laughs> Surrender earlier. Okay, castle drop. Okay, castle drop is going to lead to you being even further behind in economy because you won't have three town centers pumping out bills. And Tato will just go knights and he'll go rams and push you back. Faster halbs. Faster halb wouldn't work. There's 32 paladins here, man. That's 5,000 HP. <laughs> And he has the eco to make more. And he's Tootins! He could just make Teutonic Knights! Which which wreck Halvadiers. Halvadiers do one damage versus Teutonic Knights. Dive. Yeah, maybe commit and take a big risk in the mid game. Like, take a big risk, and I'm I'm just not sure where, though. That's the problem. Tato defended all the little the little chokes that could have been a problem. It's tough, man. I, I don't think Yo made many mistakes there, really. I just think Tato masterclassed him. And with a Civ, you never expected to see there, which is the cool thing. But Tato one win away from making it to the final, people. And here's a look at the eco. Um, Tato dominated with the food and the gold. That 3TC boom here paid off. Okay, there is one thing that comes to mind. What if Yo scouted a little bit better? If Yo didn't see a barracks, he could maybe go 3TC boom himself and not push. And then if you don't push, maybe you have a better chance. Like, maybe you open with some other unit. Um, It's really, really hard to say. Anyways, uh, here's a quick look at everything if you didn't see it already. And uh, if you're curious how fast they are, boom! It's funny. Every single game, Yo seems to be faster than the opponent in Dark Age. I remember that in the Viper series as well. N none of this really matters. It seems pretty close, but I know people like to see the effect of APM. Whew. Well, Tato in the driver's seat. And Tato in the driver's seat with some really good civilizations remaining as well, guys. Remember, the way that I broke this down at the start of the day was I said whoever wins Arabia wins the, the, um, wins the series. And the reason I said that 
was because I don't see Yo losing on his home maps with his civilizations. He was able to win on Nomad after losing Arabia. And now his final home map is on Lands Madness. So if you're rooting for Tato, get excited, but also brace yourself because it will be Magyars for Yo, a civilization that I think is just straight up number one on that map. But Aztecs, I'm telling you, Aztecs are a tricky civilization. And I think Tato did that previously in the tournament. So let's just quickly cross off Incas. We'll cross off um, uh, Teutons. And so, with the next game being Lands Madness, the expectation is that Yo goes Magyars for a lot of scouts. I don't... Okay, so you have to use Process of Elimination. The final game, if Tato were to lose this next one, would be Arena. So Aztecs and Burgundians are probably the two things that make sense. Maybe Vikings if you want to get real crazy. Um, but I think not. On Lands Madness, I think Vikings is not one of the best sieves you can go for. If you want to go for the scout approach, you can go Burgundians. But maybe we see something different like Spears and Eagles. I just don't think Burgundians plays towards the strengths that of the civilization, and I don't think it plays towards the strength of the map. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Playing as Burgundians doesn't play towards the strength of the Burgundians. <laughs> That's, yeah, I got that wrong, but um, yeah, we'll find out soon. Thanks to everyone who's here. Thanks to everyone who's watching and rooting and supporting and following and subbing. Thank you, Bourbon Proof and Colt. Um, I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm also now awake. It took one hour and 45 minutes of casting to not sound raspy and like I just rolled out of bed, I hope. And I'm correct on the prediction. Tattoo goes Aztecs here. And I didn't watch the set, but I think that Tato went Aztecs against MBL yesterday on this map. And we have seen Aztecs and Mayans dominate in tournaments for, well, since ever. So I'm catching up to live time. We're now caught up. We have Yo in the blue. He needs to win this if he wants a chance at moving on to the finals today. Um, and here's Tato going Aztecs. And I'll talk about his approach in a second. But first, let's just talk about what is on the cards for today. This is going to be a long day of games. The next semifinal is after this. That is between Jordan and Leary. After that is a best of three third place match. And then after that is the best of seven final. Um, I am I'm going to be casting most of the day solo today and I've been enjoying it. I hope the fact that I've been able to really hammer home and break down strats, especially that previous game for you guys, is clicking in some way. Um, which I feel I'm able to do a little bit more sometimes when I'm on my own. But I will be casting the final with Viper. And the final with Viper is a best of seven. We don't know who's going to be there yet. Looking Run. forward to that. And I also told my buddy old pal if he wants to hop in for any of these sets today to give me a call. So we'll see. Now, let's start with how Magyars tend to perform. Magyars, they tend to win and dominate, but the reason for that is because of their very cheap scouts and the free forging upgrade. And on this map, you cannot wall in the rocky terrain, meaning that full walling your base in a circle to keep scouts out is just not a possibility. So there are going to be scouts out for you, and that is the strongest early feudal rush in the game. For Tato, he's got a sieve that can counter Magyars, but I think it comes down to how well Yo counterattacks. And I'll bring it back to that in a couple minutes when it starts to happen. But the key here for Tato, as he misclicks, and he's going to get housed here, um, you have to make sure you defend from the scouts, and then you have to be patient and wait till you get a few barracks out. And he's going for a barracks now? What? This is not what I meant. Just FYI. Drushing... Uh, which is a Dark Age Militia Rush as he somehow misclicks again. How is that villager not... Oh, there's no food left. <laughs> Dumb game. What a bug. No, that's just Tato making a mistake. Um, but no, uh, shoot. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Drushing is very rare for this map. Because by the time the Militia arrived, the enemy's already on the way to Feudal. So I'm surprised to see that. But I could see a world where if Magyars just want to make knights... Aztecs could have pikemen, they could have eagles, and they could have monks. And that is a combination that 
very few civs, if any, can stop in Castle Age. It's just surviving to that. And this is a map that's very frequently full feudal, too. So it's it's like, does that not just invite Yo to try and end this in Feudal Age? Is someone saying a full wall is possible for Yo? I mean, in theory, you could wall like this. And then you could wall... Eh. If you want to call that a full wall possibility, go ahead, Conron. <laughs> but you could also full wall if you're Tato. Watch. This way. This way. This way, this way. I mean, it's just not. That's a lot of walling, man. That's a lot of walling. I think if you had like John Slow playing in this right now, he'd probably make it happen. But let's see what your scouting looks like. He did see the barracks. He spotted the barracks. That's why he's pre-walling. How did he scout that, man? Uh-oh. Oh, he's trying to get a second lumber camp up, though. That's good for Tato. I don't think Tato's going to stay in Dark Age. That would be too ballsy. What he's trying to do is he's trying to delay before he backs this up with his own feudal age. And that is something he has accomplished now. So I think, yo, if he wants a second lumber camp, he has to place it here. But since he was planning his build order out to have... Oh my god, the madman's doing it again. The madman is doing it again. He did this against Viper yesterday. He's going to go archer opening. You can see what this pressure does, though. Like, this villager's idle. This villager's outside the walls. Tato's checking on that right now. The Drush has really done something for him here. And multiple times, Yo has sent villagers over to a resource. And he hasn't been able to actually collect that resource. There's no way Tato kills that vill. He should give up on it. A little too aggressive there, as you see a barracks now for Yo. But this is Yo opening up with something that is not really in his wheelhouse with his sieve. The good news is, and we saw this when, when Yo beat Viper yesterday on this map. Is you open archers, they're going to go skirm sometimes. And then you can just go into scouts afterwards against the skirm. So it's not the end of the world. Um, Khmer can be good here. I just don't think Khmer is good as Magyar's. And Yo had both of them. So uh, maybe that's why Yo picked it. It doesn't seem like Yo has plans for, for Khmer. Yo has both Magyar and Malay. So maybe if yeah. he meant to pick Magyar... Maybe he meant to pick Magyard for uh, for Arena. <laughs> hey, man. As Tato goes to stone. Oh, wait. Watch. I can tell you what this is. You ready? He's going to make a lumber camp with this. I don't think that's going to confuse Yo either because Yo should understand what that means. And if you're confused, just wait a second, okay? Come on, Tato. Do it for the people. The people want this. Lumber camp. Um, oh, okay. Fine. He's just going to drop it off. So what I wanted him to do... If you make an eco building that is not necessarily associated with that resource, it still drops off the res. So if he collected 50 stone with five bills and dropped the lumber camp before dropping it off, he would still get the stone. It's like if you collect 10 gold and make a farm, you get the gold. But yeah, he just, I guess he didn't want to get a second lumber camp. And what he really wanted to do was plan on getting towers up, which is why he collected some extra stone. And that's interesting to me. Because he spotted the range, so he knew that this was going to be coming, and he just wants to get towers down. Who's got a quick fix to a hangover? What's up, city boy? I've been told that my stream is the perfect fix for that, so welcome to your hangover cure. I'd also recommend really greasy pizza. And um, depending on how hungover you are, a beer. <laughs> I This is not professional health advice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Well, you've got uh, archers moving around. This certainly has bought Tato time that he would want. At home, he is making eagles. He is making spears. No, I could see this working out for Tato more and more. Look at how much time he's been able to buy himself with this. Yo's eco is pretty good. And Yo will have archers with fletching. So th that's... He has more potential to do damage right now than Tato does. But... Tato hasn't completely got destroyed yet. Still think that could come, though, with scouts and archers. We'll have to see. Tato's just producing out of one barracks. That's it. The rest is just eco. So, as he's actually on these berries as well, he's really going for a greedy defensive style. And he's even adding a market. Wait a second. Is he going to try to go Castle Age? 
I think he will. I guess if he feels like he's threatened on these berries, he's just going to pull off and go to wood or gold. If he feels like he's threatened on these berries, the same. And he's going to try and take this towards castle where he will go for all in eagles. And that's exactly where Aztecs shine. It's just everything about this has been really, really, I don't want to say well thought out yet because we'll see how it works. Uh, but it's been thought about. <laughs> it's been thought out and just so creatively done. Um, he's going to add another. Oh, that's the blacksmith. Excuse me. He's going to add the blacksmith now. It almost feels like Tato has practiced this so many times. So good. But now it's important that he reacts as the pressure finally shows up. And he is going to lose the vill. Okay, now, here's the issue. Castellage is exciting and all. But he's going to be pressured in multiple areas. And he just tossed away another villager here. So that villager is going to go down. Nice dodging there from Yo. So he's two vills down. Now his TC is not creating any more vills because he's going the risk riskily to Castle Age. And there's going to be a whole lot more coming in from Yo. I like the house walling from Yo too, by the way. As Yo is going to send scouts in here. Yo's scouts and his archers can easily take out Tato's eagles. So just can he also... Can he pick the time to take army and can he pick the time to take vills? It's real risky with the towers around. With the TC around. There's going to be a point where he will dive, but there's also going to be a point where Tato gets seven base attack for these Eagle Scouts. And that's going to be in 90 seconds when he hits Castle Age. So I think the proper approach to this is Forever Feudal, but it almost might be too late to add the second and third stable right now. So we're seeing Yo happy with the damage he's done, stopping the production of Scouts to try and get up to the next age. And I think that even though Tato took Lost Villagers and his barracks is delayed now, I think that this is going to be good for Tato. This brings me back to the Archer opening. It's a little slow, which I don't think you want on this type of a map. I know if this is the proper move for Yo. You have to... At this point, you've delayed scout production for so long, you have to just try and go Castle Age. By the way, to the person who said Yo could full wall, he's working on it here. If he could somehow stonewall this, not only would I look like an idiot for saying my viewer towards is exaggerating, but, well, that's the main thing. <laughs> but it would actually be so clutch to get stone walls down. I just don't think he's going to have the time, which is my original point, by the way. So I might also look like a genius. So thank you. <laughs> I feel so smart. Where's he going with these vills? For deer? I guess Tato will never look there. Here come the Eagles. Yo is trying to keep his archers alive, which makes sense. Eagle Warrior on the way. We have very creative, awkward walls now for Mr. Yo. And Yo's eco isn't looking too hot in terms of villagers working. Sorry. Idle here. Idle Sorry. here. Sorry. Idle here. Woodline. If there's a hole, he's dead. And Tata moves on to the finals. Oh, there's no hole. Woo! Okay, Eagle catches out the archers there, but it was just one of them. And now Eagle's run underneath Yo's TC, which he was a little late to reacting to. But Tato's coming in to dive for these archers. Those archers are going to end up being pretty important here. So I think Yo, uh, he's probably going to run all the way to that tower and hop inside of it. But look how strong Eagles are! <laughs> you needed to kill Tato before he got here. This is before it gets worse, too. But also, one, two, three. Three went down. I might have missed one or two more. And now he's got... Well, he's going to kill a Vil. That's good. But he's only got four Eagles, which isn't the best. Actually, he'll get more Vil kills. I don't know why Yo is out here with these villagers. Tata will go for the blocks. Nice job there. He'll get two, vil, two additional Vil kills because of the blocking. Doink. And there's more eagles around. And Tato's going all in here, guys. He's going triple barracks. Can Tato make it to the final? There's been a lot of S-tier tournaments over the past two years. But I don't think Tato has made it to a single S-tier tournament final in the last two. Like, this would be huge for him. He got past MBL. He'd have to get past Yo, who got past his teammate Viper. Tato is, is playing out of his mind right now. And this is Aztecs on Lands Madness. Magyars is supposed to be the number one Civ. 
Hmm. It seems like there's a theme every time, single time there's a tournament. Aztecs and Mayans. <laughs> They're pretty darn good, man. Pretty darn good. This is where you would want to be if you're Tato, because the enemy starts making knights, and, and there's not many archers out, so you could go pikemen, or you could just add monks. And I say, why not both? You could also just make eagles, because if you have 20 eagles and they only have three knights, you're going to win every single fight you take. Right, here you go. Eagles are diving. Tato realizes this, this is the situation. He knows he's got the lead. And so he just decides to dive under here. But it is up against TC and Power Fire and it's Magyar Knights under there. I guess you've got to be a little cautious about it. It is worth mentioning that Tato doesn't have the greatest eco upgrades. But also with Aztecs, that's not as big of a concern. Aztec eco is pretty stupid strong. And there's the monastery at home. Double monastery. If you go YOLO and it doesn't work, just go YOLO some more. Yo needs a counterattack. Yo needs some type of counterattack. And the way to do that is wall and send units forward. So here it comes. The walls were already up. Eventually a villager might overchop a tree. So I'm keeping an eye on that, but I can't. Okay, no, that's got 60 wood back there, that tree. The gold seems fine for now. Will the counterattack do enough? Let's see Tato's reaction. I think Tato spotted it already, or at least senses it. Because he's going to run over here, I think, to this gold. Now we'll have two monks coming out of the monasteries. He has to protect his wood line, which I think he'll do. The eagles run away here, which is good. And man, we've got such a good game right now. No! There's a hole! That hurts, Tato. That hurts big time. And also, if he doesn't get the conversions, oof. Yo's going to make it out of here because he hears the Wololos, and suddenly Yo says, no, no, no. Screw you, Aztecs. I want a game five. Also, this is so cheeky and so sneaky from Yo. He's somehow getting away with that. Yo will know the monks are on the move, but I think it's worth it to maybe get a villager here if you see it. He disagrees as he's running around, and guys, he quickly walled here. I don't know if there was actually an overchop, but just in case, he reacted there as well. Because he needs to protect his eco at the same time. There's so much going on. Tata was moved off of this gold. And Tata's going to get two conversions on the full HP Knights. Nice. He gets the conversions. That helps an awful lot. But this hurts. More villagers moved away from gold. And a couple more eagles going down. But the eagles are also diving underneath Yo's TC. Yo doesn't have the Knights at home to deal with this. It is a lot easier to mass eagles and monks. Than it is to mass knights because all you need is a bunch of villagers on gold for eagles and monks. But was that worth it for Tato? It's really hard for me to tell. The idle time on Yo's TC has been really high. And the idle time on the farmers is certainly going to make an impact. But he did have a lot more eagles here before. This is exactly what you expect when you order Land's Madness at your local restaurant. Um, I would like to see a Land's Madness with... Uh, dessert of game five personally but land madness never disappoints all right the reviews are good on yelp and wherever else google you know it's going to be a treat when there's land madness as you actually see light cap for yo which is a good move against monks you would think tata would have a lot more monks but he was moved off of gold so many times it took him a bit and he also can't just have monks he needs to have eagles too also, he doesn't have a second town center. Neither does Yo. But these are th important things to focus on. And here come the Knights. They're coming back home. But England fans, it's coming home much like the way you didn't think it would. Uh, <laughs> the Knights are here to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Knights are here and bad things are going to happen. So it's the wrong type of, of coming home. Um, and why do, I, why do I make jokes? I'm seriously like... Even if 90% of you laugh and think it's funny and, like, fair play, you 10% are going to get upset. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Yo is such a god! Holy crap, man. That was so sick. How he looped in with the light cav there to take four monks while he was hitting this gold and hitting this gold. The triple threat. And Tato might not be able to do much after this. Now... S similar to before, the Eagles are here, and Yo's Knights are out of position. <laughs> what a game this is!
But villagers should die underneath that tower pretty soon. And while the eagles are underneath the TC, there are going to be more knights for Yo, and it might be just enough for him to be able to clear this as the villagers are getting slaughtered at Tato's base. Now, there's still monks out there for Tato. Yo still only has one TC. That's the same for Tato. But man, how much happened there was insane, and Yo was in the perfect spot in three instances. Also, again, we'll trade against the eagles underneath his TC. Now, the crazy thing is, as he engages against the monk and kills it and loses another knight, two knights, actually, um, the crazy thing is Tato's military count is still in a solid spot, and conversions can always swing it. And I think if you're in a messy game, it's always better to have Aztec eco because you're just plopping villagers on gold and you don't need farms. The Tato probably needs more than five farms, but... The fact that he's alive with only five farms and Yo's had 15 to 20 and it's even is it just shows you the difference of what you need for the economies. Now, Yo's going to TC this and that's a gold that he's already been taking. So that's not going to last too long, but I still like the town center. And then the reason that's telling to me is because this gold's about to run out for him and I think he'll have to run away from his walled area. And Tato now adding a town center as well. And this is more than manageable for him. Because he's going to run forward. And he's got four monks together. Now, Aztec monks get five extra HP for every monk tech okay. that comes in. He already had Sanctity, which actually gives you additional HP in the first place. He's going to have 55 HP monks, five of them, with the eagles. Yo has nine knights. The conversions just change the game in this type of a situation. Just so much more difficult to be the knight player. It, it, I actually hate it so much. <laughs> but you love to, you love it when you're in Tato's position, believe me. Okay, one villager goes down. Yo has to be very careful. And now his farms have to be abandoned as he loops back home with some of his light cav. He actually converts a knight back. Jimmy come home, and now Jimmy... <laughs> Jimmy just, he just, he just offs himself. He doesn't want to be on their team. Here you've got a raid now with knights and light cap, and all Yo's doing with the light cap is waiting for the monks. He knows the monks are going to come out. He's going to pull the knights away. Unfortunate there to still lose his knight. But really good job. I just don't think he can engage here. Oh, and he's not paying attention! Oh, but the monk RNG was not with Tato in that situation. Yo is desperate to keep those villagers alive. He needs maybe five or six light cap before taking this fight. He did kill additional villagers back here. He's got the vill lead. And he's going to go in now with the light cav. He hasn't taken out any monks yet. Tato blocking nicely, and the light cav have to pull back. In theory, Yo should still be fine economically, but the problem is he, he still has idols because of the pressure. And now Tato uses the light cav that he converted to kill the monk. <laughs> That's funny. I think how do you like it? As we see a tower, and Yo doesn't have... A lot of food income. He doesn't have as much gold income as he would want. He's going to send villagers over here. It says they're on gold, but they're going to have to travel to get there. He was also on stone, so he has to leave with that. He's also still raiding here, which will get cleared after good value. And there's the overall KD. If this overall KD doesn't tell you that Aztecs are freaking busted, I don't know what will. Yo is a 2-1 to one KD. He has had horse collar. Like, <laughs> I mean, granted, Yo could benefit from that KD and end up winning, but holy cow, man. And Yo's going to TC the middle. What a game this has been. So someone just mentioned that Tato needs pikes. The problem is his eco's not set up for pikes. He's trying to get his eco set up for pikes after going three TCs, but the pikeman upgrade alone he cannot afford. So pikeman is not realistic for him right now. Not with the way this has played out. And, uh, like, if you go really gold heavy, it's always Eagle Monk. If you go partially gold heavy, it's usually Eagle Pike. But Tato is just not doing damage with his forward force right now. And that's a concern for him. There's not... He's not taking Yo off of any crucial resources as Yo's going to swoop in again with Light Cav. Tato sees it. Yo even has his monks going for conversions. But, yeah, there's just too many monks... And the eagles are there, so Yo just does the wise thing and loops away. Yo has the town centers, but he it hasn't been producing out of them, as you can see here. 
Tato's actually doing a better job at producing out of his TCs over the last couple minutes because he's not spending as much food. So you can boom, you can make eagles, you can make monks. The correct move for Tato is to actually fall back and defend now. I act I think that Tato can stabilize this if he defends from these raids. Because his economy is looking pretty good. Granted, I'd like to see a few more eco upgrades, and there are a bunch of knights in his base right now. And he could easily get cut off, caught out here. Yo knows he was here. Yo knows that the monks are slow, so this army is not going to move away too quickly. Tato aiming for a fourth town center you can see on the mini-map. And Tato going this direction. That seems like an area where Tato's going to get pounced on. If Yo were to come home right now and then use his reinforcements against this, this could be a nightmare for Yo. Or, or Tato, excuse me. Alright, knights are very confused. They've switched sides many times in this game. <laughs> the light cap come in again! And again, Tato shuts the door! No, yo! These are my monks. The value of the monks. Insane. But, again, we're getting close. Tato can't get back home now. He probably thought about it. He cannot get back home. As you now see the food eco, you now see the pikemen. Yo's gonna take this fight, which I don't think... Well, no, he was controlling that. And he's not going to mind that just because it's before Pikeman. But still will end up losing most of his units as we'll focus back over here now. 65 Vils versus 69 Vils. It's a tournament semi. Finally, the monks will get taken care of. And if the monks get taken care of, the eagles will get taken care of. Yo just needs to do a slightly better job of getting his villagers back to work, I think. And, and then, I think he's going to be okay with 32 farms. He will clear this. Tato, though, will be on primarily pikemen. So, you've weathered the monks, you've weathered the eagles, but you've done it with knights and light cav, and now Tato has the eco for pikemen. What do you do now, yo? Well, you could maybe consider scorpions. Uh, I love how yo has been healing his knights. The, the big thing you have over pikemen is running away from them. And here he goes. So, if you can outmaneuver them as he goes in with light cav again... Dude, Yo, I, I'm not kidding when I say Yo and Tato are playing some of their best Age of Empires right now. I know that when this tournament concludes, people are going to look and say like, well, oh, Hera wasn't able to make it in because of the sign-up thing. Maybe maybe Dogal's issue with his internet dropping out. You know, there's going to be some conversations. There always are after events. People nitpick. But my God, are these guys playing high level. Like, Yo's ability to use the light cab has been insane. And Tato's ability to to be creative with his strategy, which has always been his strong suit, has been nuts as well. Yo is very heavy on stone, so he's probably hoping for defensive castles against the Pike Bush. And the thing about going Pike Bush is you need to force fights by having siege. You need them to fight you. And if the siege isn't there, there's nothing forcing Yo to engage against this. So he's just doing, running circles right now. And it's, it's, again, perfect Age of Empires. It makes me so happy. People are like, T90, how do you keep coming back? How do you keep watching? How do you stay motivated? Well, the reason I, I want to get the big boy tournaments in, <laughs> the reason I want to cast these tournaments that are S tier with all this prize pool is because the players take it so seriously, and it's just beautiful to watch. I love the castle for Yo there. It does feel like we're leaning closer and closer towards potential game five. The Tato's got a lot of pikes, but it's just defensive now, and you can see what the pikemen are doing. Nothing. They're just they're, they're looking for the the job. They're they're like we await orders, as it says in strongholds. I wonder if you tech switch into cav archers. Do you go long swordsman? What do you do to follow this up if you're yo? If anything else. As 27 on stone means that he will not be an Imperial Age anytime soon. Did you see that? Boom. Instant. Monk dead. As he hits the wood line with the light cav. Would it be fair to say that this game is the most perfect game of Age of Empires in 2021? I'm already thinking about the YouTube title. <laughs> There's been a lot of good games. But in terms of how the Civ should be played, seriously, it's been insane. Maybe maybe the 23 on stone is, is not really uh, ideal, but maybe it is. If you just castle everything on Land's Madness where there's gold and stone everywhere, what can Pikemen do? 
Tato getting wheelbarrow, it is very late when he's on four TCs. But he prioritized his food eco in so many different ways. What? How did the light gap get converted that fast? That's supposed to be a counter. Oh, uh-oh. Um, Tato, your monks. Tato must feel so helpless patrolling around with his uh, pikemen right now. This group of pikemen has been following everything. And oh, it's a forward castle! Forget about the defense. Yo wants the offense. He knows there's not as many monks out. He knows the pikemen are out of position. That monk somehow doesn't get a conversion on a knight after the other one converted a light cav in a millisecond. But that's monk RNG for you. And Yo's not going to care. Yo is definitely going to take this to a game five. As we see Carvinian army, army. And that means he can make some Magyar Hussar. And that will not cost gold. Really fun tech to see. Yo is playing with one of my favorite civs too. And he's used them wonderfully here. I think Tato did so much right in this game. And I think that Tata would have beaten the majority of players in this tournament with the way he played this, in all honesty. It's just that Yo had an exceptional ability to snipe monks, use mobility, and stay alive when the going got rough. Do you remember when Yo stopped making units in Feudal? I was thinking, well, well how does he defend from the Eagles? And he somehow did. The <laughs> best looking unit in the game with the Hussars? Yeah, man, look at those Hussars. Woo! It's a shame that the Magyar Hussar is weaker than a knight. It really does look good. Let's zoom in on him. Are you going to win this game? Are you going to win this game? Oh, come on. You know when they stand there, they kind of like nod their head up and down? I was hoping for that, but it kind of ruined it. So, okay. Well, if I can find an idle unit at some point, I'll give you guys what... No. Okay. I'll give you guys what you want. Either way... Yo is on the way to the Imperial Age. He is all over this town center. It's chingalinging down, and I think Tato might continue to play here as he feels he's pretty close to Imp and he still has the pikes. But I think we just have to wait until Yo runs away enough times till he has a bigger mass and then has upgrades in the next age. Uh, and then Tato will get trapped down as well. Let's see. Can I find an idle Hussar? No, I can't. Now, the final game is going to be on Arena, which is not Yo's strong suit. And if Clown Cup is something that you value, Tato was the winner of Clown Cup, which is an Arena tournament. Um, and so that was like, you know, the, the biggest Arena tournament that happened somewhat recently. I think it was a year ago. So Tato's capable on Arena. And also, we'll have an interesting Civ for Arena. He'll have Burgundians, I believe. So, Burgundians and um, Burgundians against Yo's Malay is what I think will happen. Yeah, Categorine. Masters of Arena is a thing, but while Masters of Arena 6 is happening right now, uh, there has not been a Master of Arena in a, in a while. Masters of Arena 5 wasn't taken seriously. Um, there weren't a lot of big signups. So, it was really that clown tournament. I mean, most of the high level players don't really prioritize Arena much, right? So. I was trying to think of a tournament where they all are most signed up. I don't think Yo did. <laughs> but yeah, Tato is on life support right now. And Yo is the one in charge of who pulls the plug and when. And Yo is going to pull that plug in just a second. And Tato is just going to have to accept defeat. You have Cav Archers. And the Cav Archers are also an excellent tool against the Pikes. Yo has insane upgrades. I think Tato calls it now because there's just no way back. Wow. What a series. Uh, now, I did not have the pleasure of casting all of this tournament, but I did cast yesterday, and we saw players like Doubt and Leary and Viper and Yo, and we saw Jordan and Nikov. Forget about all of it. This is the best set of the tournament so far. A a hands down, the quality has been nuts. The strategy has been nuts. Everything that you'd want to see was, was seen in this first semifinal. And we have one more game. And as I said, it will be on Arena. But before we get there, let's just sum this up a little bit. Look at the amount of military Tato had. How did Yo survive that? The light cav was so clutch. I wish I had a stat on how many monks were killed in this game. I really do. Um... Oops, uh, hold on. Return to map is what I wanted. Uh, return to map is what I wanted. 
Uh, the little drop down showed how many units were created. 65 eagles and 50 knights. That's wild to me, but I wish it showed the monks. If I had to guess, there were at least 15 to 20 monks. That's 2,000 golds worth, maybe more. Uh, and Tato probably had more gold income because of that. Nope, he didn't. I was wrong. He had more wood. Yo, with better food eco in the end, better gold eco, and better stone eco. But yeah, I'm I'm just so pleased after watching that because you can see, even though Tato lost, how people could lose against that strat. I think that what hurt him was he didn't have the best food eco, so he had to go only Monk Eagle. And the, when he Pikeman switched, it was already a little too late because Yo had gained a lead. And the reason Tato didn't have that food eco, that stellar, stellar food eco you might want, is because of Yo and the way he pressured Tato. And he forced Tato to go so all in. Beautiful game. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful game. And also, it is nice to see Magyars win against Aztecs. Aztecs win all the time. Um, and it's good to see like a map like that where different civilizations shine and different units can have success. Okay. So that game... <laughs> Just think about it. Probably the best game of the tournament just happened. Fast paced and exciting. And now we get to go to arena <laughs> where nothing happens for 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle this emotionally right now. I need more action. Um, okay, I mean, there will, build, there will be a build up. That's for sure. <laughs> but from fast paced to very slow and chill. Uh, maybe it'll give me time to say hello to you all. Um, you know, if I can't say hello to you all, there's normally a wave of people saluting you right about now, welcoming you, so thank you. Um, scores 2-2. Let's get a little bit of speculation in on the civs real quick before the get next game starts. And um, I'm going to look through... Okay, Magyar's won there and Aztec's lost. So while Khmer are also good on Arena... I think Malay is better on Arena. So I think we'll see Malay for Yo. And then Tato has Vikings and Burgundians. Picking Vikings wouldn't be the craziest thing simply because of the Civ matchup. Malay like to go for fast Imperial Age Arbalest. Vikings can do that quite well. But I think that Burgundians are simply better on Arena right now. It will depend on Tato's preparation. Burgundians have had some tweaks, so I don't know how much he's played them. I don't know how confident he is with them. I, in terms of strength, though, Burgundians are just stronger than all the civs available, except for Khmer, I guess. But Arena, while it is about Imperial Age strength, uh, you have to think about early Imperial Age strength. You can't just assume with Khmer you're going to get to Elephants. So my guess is Malay versus Burgundians. I think that's the easy guess. Um, if you're a betting man, that's what you'd want to bet on here. And they have started the next game. We might be a minute behind, but it's Dark Age, and we'll hop in right now. Okay. <laughs> Ark says, whoever it was that said they were studying today, study the next 15 to 20 minutes. You won't miss anything. Hey, don't you discourage viewers from leaving the stream, Ark. Come on. That's not cool. Actually, that... While that is true, there's a lot of really important things to cover, okay? Um, I need to break down the strat. That's a good thing about Arena is I have time to talk about all the specifics. Not to pat myself on the back, but I feel like with the previous game, I did a fairly good job of doing so amongst the madness. Hey, by the way, it is a best of five, not a best of seven. So this is the final game in the semis. They have not launched yet, but they will soon. Yo was kind of underwhelming on Arena yesterday against Viper. Would you guys agree? He had an okay Castle Age, and then an Imp. He was there for like three minutes and resigned. In fact, while the whole best of five yesterday between Yo and Viper went to five games, to me it was nothing compared to this set. I feel like every game that happens in the, pre in, uh, the Yo and Viper set the person who lost could have won, and I was kind of confused. There's been no confusion here today. This has been sick. Oh, God, I just joined the lobby. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 
Whoops. Sorry, guys. Thought you started. I didn't mean to join. I think they had launched and I, I, uh, I ruined it for them. <laughs> What's up, Kaidos? I'm going to get through some other names here. Bonzi, uh, Maga, Cactus Keed, Ryuk. Uh, Kutro says, thanks for getting me back into this game after so many years. Love the content. Hey, you're welcome and thanks for being here. Uh, Dig Bick. Thank you for the 26. Uh, sorry to hear that, but not sorry to hear that, I guess. <laughs> uh, thanks for the continued support. Uh, Nick Oleus, thank you. Marcus, thank you. And hello. Big Ultra says, T90, why didn't you play in this? Um, I, would I have? I, I guess I could have played in the first day. I wanted to do community games. Odds are I probably would get through a few rounds and then lose. So I, I just, my priorities with casting. That's kind of where we're at. T90 is too good for this. Uh, yeah, actually, I was, uh, I was fourth seed and I, I missed the sign-up window. That's what it was. I missed the sign-up window. I missed the check-in. That's what it was. I was really confident. I'd put in so much practice. And I thought that I was going to win the whole thing. And then, you know, I just missed the sign-up window. And I said, oh, okay, we'll do community games. Seriously, though, 7 a.m. check-in window? Oof. That's rough. I feel for Hera on that one. Um, okay. So, we are in the game. You guys will see it here in a second. And let's go. Game five. Big, big moment for both of these players. And we have a big, old, boomy, campy map with two very unique arena sieves. In the blue, we have Yo, who's gone from Malay, the sieve that is known for going fast feudal, fast into eco upgrades, fast into Castle Age, and then taking map control like you normally do in Arena, and then a whole lot else. For Gundians, while they don't advance faster to the next stage to get eco upgrades, they don't have to do that because they can research their eco upgrades one age earlier. Now, there was a build, and I've only seen one player doing it. And it's not like the most well-known player, so maybe these guys disagree with his outlook. I would like to argue that they probably just didn't test it. His name is Cloud. He's a Taiwanese legend. And this guy uh, played Doubt. You guys might have seen a YouTube video. And he played Doubt. When he ended up playing Doubt, he um, went 22 or 21 pop. I forget the specifics. Fast Feudal into Castle Age Eco Upgrades. Ended up having a sick castle age time and going for a 6 or 7 TC boom with Burgundians. Now, back then, the Flemish Revolution was very cheap. So, the plan was to boom into 180 vils and then get that. I don't think that's going to be in the forefront of Tato's mind. But that gimmicky tech still exists. So, it's an option for Tato. More than anything, I think he'll make use of getting eco upgrades earlier. Um, and then maybe go into something like Paladin and Skirmisher, which could work really well against Malay. But yeah, watch that video. I think it was Defending from the Revolution, or Doubt Defending from the Revolution. Doubt had to go Fortified Wall, multiple defensive castles with crenellations, and Bombard Cannons to defend from that. Like, he really braced himself from it, so... I, I'm not a fan of the technology. I've made no secret of that. But at least the devs made it more expensive. I just don't know if it's worth it anymore. Okay, so I just noticed something. Tato's stone positions are really bad. And I know there was an issue yesterday where they had to replay a game between Yo and Viper. So I'm not sure if Yo has some mega hacks that makes the stone positions worse for his enemies. Or if the map scripting's just kind of meh. But Tato's... Stone positions could be a concern for him. He can't leave this gate because of the stone. Um, and then here, his other stones are forward. So this is technically a neutral, but it's worth pointing out. I much prefer Yo's base. The stone's more accessible, and he has two golds in the back. Whereas Tato has his gold somewhat forward, and this gold here as well, which is fine. But guys, gone are the days where high-level players, like the real big boys, go for Maganel pushes on Arena. Um, there are some Arena players who are good at that, with all-in Monks and Siege. But Eco is king. You tend to see the same thing every time on Arena, which I think is why it's it's moved down in the pecking order of people's favorite maps. 
uh, for watching high level play because it's usually booming and light cav. So, is it me or does T90 rant about any new change in AoE 2, good or bad? Janchess, if you think that, you don't listen to me, my friend. If you think that, you don't listen to me. <laughs> the, also, the two most recent changes were Burgundians and Sicilians. So I will admit it's been rather hard to find positive things, and I, I should try better. But I, I'll be honest with you guys on how I feel, regardless of the situation. That is what makes people hate me or makes people like me. So... <laughs> But no, there's lots of positives with DE, man. There's lots of positives, and I do talk about those things. But also, if I don't talk about the things that need improvement, I don't think we're going to get improvement on some things. So there is that aspect as well. <laughs> is it me, or does the guy whose job it is to talk a lot talk a lot? Yeah, that's true. I might talk a little too much. So, yo, uh, Fast Feudal, as we expected. 21 population. And the plan here is Fast uh, horse collar and fast bid X. Something that Tato already has. So what Cloud did, and I encourage you guys to watch the video. I don't think he's still doing it anymore, so I don't think I can get a new video on the topic. But if someone tries it, I'll find it. I'm always looking at profiles, right? And he went for Tato's upgrades, but then he went fast feudal into the Castle Age upgrades. But I think Tato's way of doing it is is obviously good. Um, it's, we know it's strong, and it's not as risky as the other way. <laughs> oh, gosh. Mm. Okay, Doctor. I'll maybe try that. I stole your ratings. I've been seeing you in chat again recently. I wanted to say hi to you. Uh, I noticed that there were quite a few clips on the stream yesterday. And I wanted to give credit to you for clipping those. Before even checking to see if it was you who clipped it. This might seem weird, but I remember, I was like, I stole your ratings, came back, and we had a lot of really good clips on the stream yesterday. And so I'm just assuming it was you. If it was you, thank you. Oh, I only clipped one, thanks. Well, well, one is awesome. One is awesome. <laughs> I just assumed it was you. I'll have to look. I'll tell you who are the master clippers is the Gamer Legion social media team. There are more clips on... Gamer Legion's Twitter of me casting games than I have ever posted anywhere. <laughs> they like Listen, I I love the fact that uh an org is involved with Age of Empires, but also <laughs> when I go to my Twitter feed and there's like 25 clips, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> but they go crazy, so I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. No one will complain about too much content as Tattoo is going to hit Feudal. And I expect a Barracks. Yep. I expect a Stable. That was satisfying how the Barracks completed perfectly. Oh, and he's gone Market. Interesting. Huh. Well, the Market's not the craziest thing in the world. That just tells you he's not going to get Blacksmith upgrades for his units. Market's actually pretty common if you want to go for a Boom approach, which is going to happen on Arena. Now, he might be a little worried for Yo. Because Tato's had the same eco upgrades, and Tato's going to end up clicking up to the next age a little faster than him. But remember that Yo advances faster to the next age. So the reason that Yo has a three villager lead right now is because he has spent less time with his TC not creating vills as he's advancing to the next age. So it's not just the eco upgrades, but it's also you'll have more vills. I think Malay could still be strong on other maps, but this is the map where the, you're, you have a given guarantee given guarantees the same thing it's a given it's a guarantee whatever that this is going to happen um recently i lost a game to malay and i watched the wreck and i was like geez i thought i did everything okay but that bonus still really works off or works well in other maps you just don't lose a couple of villagers in feudal don't lose a couple of villagers in castle and you've got a six villager lead if you have the same amount of tcs Okay, Ray Marrow says, I hope we see Karambits. Karambit Warriors could actually work very well in this matchup. You do have to be a little worried about making infantry when Burgundians have the strong hand cannoneers. But Karambit Warriors are insanely strong. And they're so cheap. 
And so I think that is a possibility for Yo. I think the expectation, though, is something like Arbalest because that's so unbelievably common. Something like Halberdier, Arbalest makes sense if you're thinking that Tato might go Paladin. Can Tato make up for the Malay bonus by going four TCs in Castle? Um, normally, you're going to be able to go for your Town Centers a little earlier than the Malay player. And specifically your third one anyways, George. So honestly, it ends up somewhat evening out, especially in this matchup. If Tato arrives to Castle Age, he's going to add one Town Center, Monastery, and then probably the next one. Yo's going to do the same. And I think that Tato will be slightly faster to the third TC. But yeah, there's really not much you can do about either of these Civs bonuses on Arena. I think the reason Arena is really good for most levels of Age of Empires is because you can go into a game with a set strat to execute it, and nothing can ruin your plan. Type of one, if you've like, you're kind of hesitant to play online, but sometimes you're like, you know what, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to try this strat. And then you get scout rushed or man and arm rushed, and you're like, ah, but, 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 but I can't follow my build order. What do I do? You know, that's why arena is really good if you want to practice strats. <laughs> I can ruin my own plan, no problem. I, I got you, Norik. I forgot about you. But everyone else doesn't do that, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, okay, well, here's the TC for Tato. I think he misclicked. I think he should be building that with four villagers. That's a misclick. So again, that should be a little bit faster per my, my thought on that. But he made a mistake because he's fight, fighting out here. And now they just fight for relics. And this is really important. All the relics are towards the middle of the map. Especially against Burgundians with their unique tech. You do not want them to have relics. As Tato realizes that mistake. What's a build order, says Dave? I don't know. I follow this one guy on YouTube. And he, he transported two stables to his own island and then resigned. Uh, I've heard that's a pretty good build, but I haven't tried it myself yet. Hmm, sneaky stuff from Yo. So Yo did have a monk over there. Tata was checking, and the monk just kind of hid. Okay, he's going to grab the relic. <laughs> you can put stables in transports? Nice try, dude. Nice try. I might have misspoke, but it still happened. <laughs> Listen... Every other time we trash talk, I lose, okay? <laughs> but you didn't do yourself any, self any favors here. Uh, it's so funny to me. I'm not alone. Yes, I'm not alone. Okay. Well, I'll have the relic count up now in case we miss something. It's one to one for now. Tato's out here trying to get another one. He might go for the sneaky approach and try and work his way around this way to this gate if he can get through there. Um... This fight seems like it would be better for Yo. He's got a lot of spearmen out there. No blacksmith upgrades for either player. The thing about Tato is he's trying to catch up in spearman number, but that's awkward because one spearman can easily be taken out by a couple light cap. Oh, look at that. Yo noticed it. Yo noticed it. You're not going to sneak away from me. And he kills the monk. And we're going to see a monk come out here for Yo. So it's actually good strategy to try and take the relics that are closest to Tato towards your base if you're Yo. Because even if you lose the monk, it's at least closer to you now. Sometimes the monk will chuck it forward a tile too. So yeah, he'll lose this. Yeah, see how it chucked it forward? <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know why that happens, but that helps a little bit. Okay, so we have three relics on the map. Yo seems to have better vision of them, better control of them. And Yo is adding a fourth town center. And Yo still has maintained that vill lead. Though Tato has had wheelbarrow. And he's had the wood and the farm upgrade this entire time. But Yo's been late on both of those. Or all three actually. But wheelbarrow is not really late in a booming scenario. Coffee 90 says, I think Britain should have a relic heist bonus given England's history of sneaking foreign artifacts into their museums. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll talk to the devs about that. I'm, I think they said they'll add that right after spec chat. So thanks for the uh, thanks for the info there. Well, here's another TC for Tato. If you ordered booming, you have booming. There's actually a sauce called boom boom sauce, which is freaking amazing. I don't know if you guys know what that is. And that's basically what you get on your arena games every single time. 
Okay. Oh, this could actually be con converts here. Or not. Okay, so that's how it should work with light calf, but sometimes sometimes the light calf get converted. It was worth a shot for Tato, who now has really high HP light calf. He's got six HP or six light calf all on full HP. So the healing he's been doing, the patience he's had has been good, but Yo is going to get three relics. And Tato's going to try and at least make it two for him. What will they boom up towards? Is there a TC on stone for you? Okay, there's not, but he's on stone. That could maybe lead towards Karambits. I think the best comp for Malay might be Karambit Warrior and Halberdier. Against Burgundians, when Burgundians will go Paladin Skirmisher against Arbalest. Yeah, I really think that's the case. Okay, Monk healing up and trying to stay safe. Like, hey, I don't know you, but I will heal you if you protect me. They're like, deal. And then they get fully healed up, and then they just let the monk die. <laughs> That's normally what happens, too, on Arena, if you think about it. The light cab immediately leave. Okay. Here comes Tato with some spearmen. I think Tato's in a good position to take the last one. This is what I meant earlier about how you need to have high spearmen numbers versus the light cab. And Yo will probably have put more focus onto his eco anyways. Not that they're both not doing that, but I think Yo's probably feeling pretty good with the three relics. He doesn't want to invest too much more to get the fourth, because he will have the lead, so. Oh, wait a second. You know where that light cap's going. <laughs> He's looking. Now, he sees the relic. No, he doesn't see the relic on the minimap. He should know that it has been picked up. And Tato's going the other way! No, this is not good, Tato! Don't go further from your base, dude! Okay, Yo's looking, and wait a second. No way! You're kidding me. That's why he did it. Yo's like, what on earth? Where is he? I checked everywhere, and now Tatsu's gonna bring it on home. Stealthy, stealthy stuff. What? And Lightcap got in! How? Yo doesn't have Loom. So, oh no, he does have Loom. He must have just researched that. That's got to be dealt with now. Tato's going to be really, really loving this now. It's not the end of the world, but he does have to make some units to deal with this now. And you just know Tato, who has no other job than to just boom, is probably going to uh, to be annoying with this. I guess one night is enough, and Yo will be happy with that. Tato could also see what Yo will do. As you'll see a siege workshop in the middle for Tato. Um, uh, Yo doesn't need to be too worried about not being clicked up yet. He's very heavy on stone, so it looks like he's going to go for castles. But Tato was later on stone than him, and Tato is going for cavaliers. So, the crazy thing about Burgundians being able to research cavalier in castle age is not necessarily the fact that they can get cavalier in castle age. Because that takes time in crucial situations. What's crazy is how you can insta-click paladin when you hit imp. So... In this type of a situation. Yes, you don't get bloodlines, which hurts. But getting Paladin at 33 minutes, and a lot of them, is insane. Because the Paladin upgrade is discounted. Oh, gosh, yo. This would be... He could lose the series right here. Oh, gosh, man. The things players do to casters, man. The things players do. Okay, well, Castle's going to go up. That knight has just been sent out here to just scout, I imagine. It'll probably die now. Yo can click this and see what upgrades are in and can see cab upgrades are coming in, so he should know. This will be Paladin for Tato. And this, combined with the eco upgrades, is why people have been picking Burgundians ever since the Civ came out for Arena. And if the enemy tries to go Halberdier against you, you make hand cannons. And you make Bombard Cannons with quick chemistry. Tato's doing this perfectly. Problem I have with Malay... Granted, I think Yo has not really shown... At least in this tournament, how to play Malay too well on Arena. The problem I have with Malay is that... Their units are not strong. Right? So you have those bonuses to give you good eco. But that's, the, that's what wins you or loses you games. You, it's not your units that's really that strong. Force Levy, people get excited about because it's a, 
it's a noob's favorite thing to make a unit that is that other people have to spend gold on, but you don't have to spend gold on, and you're like, yeah, they're gonna run out of gold. But no, you're gonna run out of life if you try and play that way at a high level. So Tato's army is just gonna be stronger. So what Yo needs to do is he needs to have more military. So if Tato has 60 military pop, Yo needs to have 90. Um, that's that's basically how it has to go. I think it's going to be tough to achieve that. But we'll see. Paladin will be in. Yo's just now getting Arbalest. And uh, he will go for help. So all this stuff seems like the proper the proper decision. Uh, as he sits in the choke point. It's just, does he have the time to get there? And Tato, choosing to fight before Paladin is weird to me. Um, maybe he just didn't have the timing exactly down in his mind. He's also underneath the castle, but he will have more where this came from. So he's happy to just weaken those and lower those numbers. Yeah, the, this paladin ended up being more than worth it. Okay, Halbul complete now. yo has got pretty good eco, but he's got eco for another castle. He's got 20 on stone again. He did the same in the previous game when he had the lead. 20 on stone means he won't have as much food, wood, gold to make everything else. He's got five archer ranges. He's got five barracks. Tato's working out of six stables. And uh, make it seven, actually. And he has bomber cannons already out as he's now adding ranges. He's going to try and take this gold. And I think he's going to try and break through here. I got a text from... Uh, family member recently. A couple of people in my family have been starting to play Age of Empires and I keep getting updates and it's super cool. <laughs> it's really funny to relive the old days of age. And someone, I uh, got a text and it was, yo, why do my bombard cannons not take out trees? And no, it was, why do my bombard balls not kill trees? I don't want to out which family member it was because nowadays I think I've, I have like I've got a couple uncles and cousins watching and they like to trash talk, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna out this one because he's the biggest noob of them all. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, sorry, it doesn't work that way. So I'm not sure why Tato came over here with the bombard cannons is my point. And Yo made a castle here in the middle, and this is where it's all gonna go down. This is the battlefield. Now, keep an eye on the value. Paladins are very expensive. The idea of playing with Malay is to play so you can afford everything and they cannot. So it's working out for Yo in terms of gold efficiency as he took out two Bombard Cannons. I think it was really weird how Tato ran over here and then just allowed this castle to go up, but he is pressuring it now at least. Oh boy, Yo's got villagers here. And Ta maybe that's why Tato went there to secure the gold. He will need that and Yo will soon have Bombard Cannons out of his own. Yo needs to be a 200 pop. He needs to have 80 military at all times. And a lot of production buildings. And Tato's trebuchet has gone down. I was expecting more from early Imperial Age from Tato. Honestly. I thought he'd be pushing this castle. Instead, there's two castles here. And... Oh, he's gonna petard in! Damage control time. What can you do, yo? Damage control. There's another petard. Can he hit a house foundation? Can he hit something to break through? What you could do is you could attack the house foundation with the paladin and then hit it with the batard, or you could trap yourself in game five. Paladins lacking bloodlines means they will go down a lot faster than other Civs paladins, and Tato has tried twice now to switch the focus. It's not normally what Arena is about. Normally, it's about a big old snowball. Both players are at 200 pop, though. It's just that Yo is working with less eco, but he'll have more military because of it. And that's exactly how this should balance out. Because his military units are worse. They're weaker in terms of population. Uh, or sorry, in terms of uh, HP. Really like the skirmisher paladin combo. This is what I thought Tata would be opening with. And maybe he was just a little late to the skirms. But if he loses the castle, he's not going to like that. And I guess his bomber cannon will take out that trep and help matters there. You don't really want to make two-handed swordsmen right now if you're Yo, because then you don't have as many halbs and arbs. So you're kind of stuck at 200 pop with what you've got. And Tata will be happy with this. Bomber cannons went down there. 
Treb went down, and now he has his own Trebs and his own Bomber Cannons, and it's his turn to push. Dude, I'm telling you, Karambit Warriors and Halberdier. I would be so good here. I think it, it just cannot justify it because of this, the stressful situation he's in and because he could lose his castles, but Karambits would absolutely own the Skirmishers, but oh my god, Tato suddenly doesn't have Paladins here. And in a moment, he's not going to have Trebs either. He lost his Bomber Cannons. He's going to lose his Trebs. Yo, 3 2 Tato's teammate Viper yesterday. And Yo is looking, I mean, after that fight, like it's better and better for him to maybe win this game. You are on the clock against Malay. If you're ever making trash units, Malay will go for two-handed swordsmen that do not cost gold. And guess what? He got forced levy, people. He, he also is researching man-at-arms. So he's thinking about it already. Onagers for Tato. Uh, it does make sense. It's also expensive. He's kept that castle up for now, as I like the fact he's researched architecture. Also, I like the fact that Yo just killed his own trebuchet, but I guess he was going to lose it anyways. Yo must have misclicked, because he has cav archers out. And that's not so good. And um, he also doesn't seem to have as much military as he did a moment ago. Both players having moments where they, they stop queuing units. This is kind of funny. Uh, Tato with Trebs is hitting the houses. And Yo's going to stonewall now. He's really worried about that. I think he'll make a bomber cannon here. Or he might send these bomber cannons in. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It, it's weird to me that Yo didn't even get masonry. He doesn't have any HP upgrades on his buildings. Uh, and maybe if Tato switches focus this time, what he can do is come back with a greater push to the middle. Because Yo is reacting to this. No bomber cannon from there yet. If there's a hole, the paladins could get in. The skirms have to pull back. The skirms do lack the final armor upgrade. Uh-oh. First time Yo will see Onager. Bomber cannon down and Arbalest get pushed back. Still not the worst fight for Yo. As he only has long swordsmen, which again brings me back to you try and tech switch in crucial situations. Oftentimes what, what can happen is you throw the game. I think he should have waited till he was in a better position to try and get all those technologies. He doesn't have the units now, guys. Tato can onager cut through the trees. If he onager cuts through the trees, he can run in with anything. He could raid with skirmishers. And Yo's even made a castle back here. Two-handed swordsman's on the way. Even though it doesn't cost gold, they're still two-handed swordsmen. They're still not a great unit. Tato has gold income. Tato's in with Paladin. Oh, man. He'll instantly kill the Bombard Cannon. That's a huge loss for Yo. By the way, Yo's Cav Archers, do, they are working. Working to take out those villagers. Now Tato's going to pressure the middle. Tato can do this. It was the side play that, that brought him all this success. He'll actually deny that castle. Tato can win the game right here. I wish he had more Trebs here. Also, what is that technology? What is that? Flemish Revolution! You're crazy! He canceled that, right? Did he can't? What happened there? What? Tell me he canceled that. He, he must have canceled it. But that tech is really fast. How do you cancel a tech that researches instantly? Oh my god! Guys, Flemish Revolution means all your villagers turn into military. He would have gone from 140 eco... And 35 military to 175 military and no eco. Granted, it can work, but you also can throw a game that way. But but speaking of, as this is, whole series continues to go back and forth, uh, the Trebs went down and he wasn't able to push the middle. And Yo was back in it. And he did it! The revolution is here. I, I think Tato did it at the wrong time, guys. I could be wrong. I have complained about this tech many times, and I'm not going to use this opportunity to do it. <laughs> but there's just not much you can do against 170 military, except cross your fingers and hold, uh, and hope that their units die to castles. Now, the key for this strategy is that you need to have Trebs behind if you're Tato, because you need to push their fortifications. And he decided to 
go for the revolution after losing two trebuchets. So let's see. Arbalest should be a counter to this. Man at arms or two handed swordsman should be a counter to this. Everything Yo is doing should be a counter to this. Now, notice what Tato's doing is he's adding more villagers afterwards. So he's, he's repopping his eco. 125 military versus 36. This is an S tier tournament, $35,000 prize pool. And a player just instantly with a click of a button in Age of Empires 2 skyrocketed to that type of a population. Now, the, the fascinating thing about this, and I will I will admit to you guys, the tech is growing on me, okay? Um, the fascinating thing about the technology and what happens as a result of it is how this bar is normally the opposite on each side. So the military number and the eco number seems to be flip-flopped. And yo, he took some big losses, but he's been able to hold against this <laughs> somehow, and the populations are looking fairly similar. But guys, why did Tato research this when he only had one bomber cannon and one trep? You need to have four treps or four bomber cannons at least. You need to be taking out the buildings when and spamming your military to the castles. This castle was clutch from Yo. And Tato now, he's not going to have resource income. And I think Tato, even though he's going to get his villagers again, is really going to struggle now. Also, wasn't needed right there. Do you guys think it was needed? I, I'm not saying the technology is uh, necessarily good or bad. I think it's situational, but I think it was rushed. When the tech came out, I said that it would be a tech you would research if you were really far ahead or really far behind. I was wrong on that. But I think there, Tata almost researched it like he thought it would just win him the game. Now he's like, what? And for the lols, maybe. He's got some units over here. It's kind of funny. He had villagers on gold, and now they're just militia. Um, and he doesn't have, you know, much really working for him as far as eco. And now, yo, should push him. Yo should get his bomber cannons and trebs out. And he's about to do that and push the middle. And I think, you know, the Flemish Revolution has been discussed a lot since it came out. But they upped the cost of it. And I was happy the devs did that because it at least made it not as OP. And it's it makes it more of a risk. And Tato, a player who doesn't really go for risky strategies, he tends to have strategies that he's practiced and tested and he has really good game sense. I think he made an awful mistake there. And you cannot research it again. Not that he'd have the resources to because I think I, chat can tell you what the new price is. But yeah, you cannot research it again. So, it's just a one and done thing. Ho hopefully, they don't make it cheaper the second time around or something. <laughs> the militia raiding! Oh man, but that revolution has led to very little for Tato as the populations are evening out. Uh, he has now lost the middle of his base. There's gold here. His relics are here as well. This area is very important. And maybe Tato just felt like he was going to run out of gold. And that he had to do something. Because Malay are so good at holding on. They're not necessarily good at pushing in the early game. It's just... It's just holding. Players are very good defensively now. And guys, Tato is falling apart. He's at 130 population. He's making some paladins out of desperation. Over here, Yo is going to get some gold. Not that he's even spending all of his gold. But I'm sure he'll find a way to. The hand cannons are a very expensive unit. You see one of those go down there, and Tato's Paladins will take out Bomber Cannons. That's good. So I guess if you're thinking of revolting against your people, you're, or revolting against an opposing government or your government, the government would like you to think that this is exactly what's going to happen if you oppose them. <laughs> this just in, Microsoft devs were paid off by a big government. <laughs> so people were not encouraged to revolt. I just, I mean, his pop looks good. Don't get me wrong. His farm count looks good. It's just his units don't look all that impressive if he can't make Paladin anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Kumar, it, it's so funny. Okay, 
On a scale of 1 to 10, how awesome do you think the Flemish Revolution is? I, I need to have an answer for most of the people watching right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how awesome do you think it is? Okay, I'm seeing some 5s. I'm seeing negative 6s. I'm seeing some 10s. It's so divisive. Some people love it. Some people are like, you old farts are too cranky. You have to accept new things. Mur, 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 mur. Other people are like, this is an age of vampires. This isn't what we know. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and it's just like so funny to me to see the responses from viewers in chat. But that aside, Yo defended from the revolution. And I think he's won the game. I think it was poorly timed from Tato. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad strat. But man, oh man, was that just poor. He needed Trebs to back it up. He needed to have more meat in front. You can't just run into Castle Fire. You're just banging your head on the wall. Eventually, you're going to get knocked out. And this is going to be Yo's game. Yo will move on to the final. And he will face the winner between Leary and Jordan, which will be happening next. Now, I don't want to say I told you so. But if you were to have been here all day, after that Nomad game, game two, I said, there might be a time where Tato kicks himself. That he didn't win that game. This is that time. Granted, he might be frustrated as well that he wasn't able to close this one out, but... He was 2,000 or 3,000 score ahead in the Nomad game, and Yo came back. This one was a whole lot closer, so you can maybe accept the loss, but... Yeah, man, in a best of five, you have to deliver in every game. And that's what Yo brings to the table. His execution is so consistent. And for the Gamer Legion guys, like, like Tato and Viper, if you look at their performances against Yo, a Viper lost to Yo 3 2 yesterday, I think you could argue that both Viper and Tato had greater peaks in their series against Yo. But they were not as consistent as Yo. There were some misplays, some missteps every now and then. And as these archer ranges go down, Yo has got to be loving life right now. Of course, uh, after this, we'll have the other semi, then a best of three third place match between the losers of the semis. So, Tato, we will see more from him today. Uh, more opportunities to fight on. Um, and I, honestly, his pop is really good. Should I not be calling this right now? His pop is really good. But I just don't see how he survives. Yo should just snag these relics so he has all five relics. Oh, yo, don't tell me. That's a little sloppy. That that's still there. Tato's doing whatever he can to try and get back into the game. But yeah, I think even though Tato's pop is high, yeah. he's he doesn't he cannot compete with 90 military. And he's slowly just gonna lose everything. Now Tato needs another revolution. <laughs> he doesn't have a castle. And you can't research it twice, but Wow. A Silker in this is the semifinal. Um, I don't think it's fair to say that Tato is failing to deliver in big events. Tato has had exceptional performances in big events. At times, being a little unlucky with wh who he faces and when. Yo has historically had his number in big events. And maybe people are expecting Tato to win finals. And if you're expecting Tato to win finals, then maybe it is fair to say he's underperforming. But I think Tato has played really, really good. Getting to a semifinal. If getting to a semifinal is failing to deliver, then I would love to fail. <laughs> Sign me up. I would love to fail. Please. Make me a failure. GG. That's just the standards we have for our players, right? To, to, the fact that someone would even say that making it to a semi and losing is a failure is just the standards we put on these guys. And Tato does not pull it out. Yo moves on to the final. Yo played so good here, guys. I I was a little worried about his units, right? I didn't think that he would be able to compete with 60 or 7 Burgundian military. Tato took a different approach. It didn't seem like he ever wanted to get his ball going. It seemed like he wanted to play it a bit like Arabia. Open it up and hit the sides. And I just don't think that worked out for him. He made Trebs and Petards on this side multiple times. He tried to run in with Paladins multiple times. And it felt like when there were opportunities for him to push Yo, Yo somehow came back stronger in the middle. Um, 
And, and even that was fine. It was still somewhat 50-50. Remember, Tata was taking all this gold, all this gold, and also had his gold at home. But then he went for the revolution, and we'll see it on the timeline. Look how far that dropped off for him. If he had trebs, it's a different story. If he had four trebs or, or similar amount of bomber cannons, he can push those castles and toss away his military. But he was just running into castle fire and arbalest and two-handed swordsmen. And in many ways, maybe Malay counter that. Because their units are so cheap, you can make the two-handed swordsmen and arbs and survive the storm. There's the KD for you. 696 kills for Yo. Uh, Tato... He did have really solid eco in that game, but Yo had more food, he had more stone, and the gold was pretty similar. Of course, Yo also executing with the relics in the middle, getting three in that game. Um, Dato, he's, he should be proud of his performance, but I think that he will be disappointed in himself because it was so close. Players are always going to think they could have changed a thing or two to get a win. And Yo moves on to the final. There's... Other things Tato could have done, like getting Burgundian Vineyards, but I don't think Burgundian Vineyards... I don't think Burgundian Vineyards would have won him the game. I think that Burgundian Vineyards could have been something combined with other good decisions that could have been good for Tato there. Um, it was just the revolution was horrible. <laughs> the revolution was just not good.